Speed Channel thanks you for watching. Bridgestone presents the Champ Car World Series powered by Ford. Through the first two races of the Champ Car season, Paul Tracy has been working on a new nickname. With two victories in those races, Paul Perfect is a possibility. Just ask the competition. Today, the Champ Cars return to a circuit known as the American Monte Carlo. Sebastian Bourdais has won on the streets of the Principality. Now, he wants to beat Tracy at the beach. They say it never rains in Southern California, and we can confirm it never rains on Long Beach when the stars of the Bridgestone presents the Champ Car World Series powered by Ford come to town. In fact, we've had great weather every year as we welcome you to the 29th edition of the Toyota Grand Prix of Long Beach. Hello everyone, I'm Bob Varsha. After days of dire weather forecasts, we have uh, heavy clouds overhead, but no sign of rain. Great breeze and warm temperatures here in Long Beach, California. Once again this weekend, our race is going out to our military servicemen and women around the world on Armed Forces Television. We all know the military activities continue in Iraq. And speaking for all of us here at Speed Channel, we are supporting you until the day you all come home safe and sound. Now the big story coming into this weekend, Paul Tracy, a Canadian who has won the first two rounds of the championship in 2003. Back in 1993, a very young Paul Tracy came to town and won here on the streets of Long Beach. A year later, he had pole but did not win. But as the millennium came to a close, Paul Tracy started 17th in the field, came through to win, and being a stylish kind of guy, struck a pose at the end. Let's hear from Paul Tracy now with Tommy Kendall. Well, Paul, I mean, this is where it all started for you. This was your, the side of your first Champ Car win. You're on a phenomenal roll this year. What's it like being uh, greeted by the fans like this, and what are your thoughts heading into this big race? Well, it's great. I mean, uh, you know, the fans always come out in droves here to Long Beach Grand Prix, and, and uh, it's great to see they're still supporting the series, and I think we've shown this weekend that the series is still here and it's alive, and, and I, I hope we can I can make it three races, three wins, and, and my third win here, so that'd be, that'd be a great day. Now, I've known you for almost 20 years, but the more I watch you, the more I marvel at your commitment. And you always give 110%. And I think people used to kind of hold that against you because you made mistakes and you were trying too hard. But you never leave anything on the table. You always give it your whole best. And I think people are coming around to appreciate that. Where does that drive come from? You've been in this sport a long time, but you're just as hungry as you've ever been. I think, you know, I've always driven like that. Uh, I think maybe probably now I'm more mature and I can assess what's risk is worth the benefit and what's not. So. You know, and also the fact that joining team players, they've given me a great car and a great team and a great group of guys, and everything just seems to be happening right now. And, and when it is, you got to take advantage of it. If it, you know, you're when things are right and you don't take advantage of it, then then it's your own problem. So, uh, you know, we've got a good car today, and, and hopefully we can we can make a, a good day. Now we're only 10% of the way through the season, but. Uh, You've, you're at the point where you can almost put a stranglehold on this series, so you've got two wins, but you got to kind of yeah. keep pushing. Next to Michelle is a good friend of yours, but business yeah. is business. What are you going to do heading into turn one? Well, I don't know. I mean, it depends what kind of a jump he gets or I get. Uh, I'm on the outside. The outside is a better braking zone. I'm sure he's going to try to protect the inside, so, uh, you know, we'll just have to see what happens. Our, my goal is to get through the first corner and then uh, get the race going, and then uh, I know we got good sets of tires like, like Mexico. We're in good shape on tires. All right, well, I'm going to let you revel in the fan support here. We're going to get it back upstairs to Bob. All right, thanks very much, TK and PT. Now, we want your opinion. Do you think Paul Tracy will be able to win his third consecutive race to start the season, his third victory here at Long Beach? Tell us. Go to www.speedtv.com and cast your vote in our speed poll ballot. And while you're there, click on the email link, and you can email us your questions and comments live here in our announce booth as the race goes on. Now, the Queen Mary at her birth on San Pedro Bay has been a lucky charm for a lot of drivers here in Long Beach, none more than our booth colleague Scott Pruitt, who won twice in go-karts on these streets en route to national and world championships. In 1987, he won in a Trans Am car for Jack Roush. 
and then he began his champ car career here with Dick Simon, drove for the two sports team, and in 1995, driving for Pat Patrick's racing team, he finished second on these streets. The best performance ever for one of the original founding teams of championship auto racing teams. He joins me now. Scotty, I know you've had so many great <laughs> highlights around these streets, and doing well here is important to drivers. It's very important to drivers. Long Beach is the biggest race of the kart season. A driver wants to do nothing more than to make a big, bold statement. But believe me, this is a tough place. If you don't got a button down, this track will reach out and touch you. And that's exactly what's happened throughout the weekend thus far. Two days of practice and qualifying. It all began on Friday, well, frankly, the way it has begun for 28 years. Lots of difficulty finding traction, spins and crashes. That's Mario Dominguez there bringing out a red flag. Paul Tracy kissed the concrete with the left rear Bridgestone, but was the fastest man in qualifying on Friday, picking up a championship point, and then getting this secret handshake from Roberto Moreno. PT quickest on day one. On Saturday, Tracy did it again in the wall at turn five, but this time he was not the fastest man of the day. That honor went to Michelle Jordan Jr. of Mexico for Team Real, his first career pole in 123 starts. Picking up the story is Calvin Fish. Well, Bob, for the third time in six years, it's going to be a Team Rahal car that starts today's race from the pole position. Bobby Rahal, great performance by Michel Jourdain yesterday. He's proven he can finish races. He's proven he can finish on the podium this year. What does it mean to him internally to now show he's the fastest man out there? Well, I think that's been a big step because, you know, in uh, St. Petersburg, you know, good enough to be second, but not fast enough for the lead. And same thing in Monterey. But to be able to, to run consistently quick all weekend, I think, I think he's got a lot of confidence and, uh, you know, getting pole does a lot, but just, you know, running every session, being up, you know, first or second quickest every session, that does huge things for your confidence going into a race, and I think, I think he's going to have a great one. All right, well, hopefully they'll have a better start than last year. Jimmy V was on the pole last year. Didn't make the best of starts. I'm sure Bobby has given Michelle some advice for turn one today. All right, thanks very much, Calvin. Now let's take a look back at the history of this great race. Dan Gurney, an American racing legend in his own right, signed on with local travel agent Chris Pook on the idea of bringing race cars to the streets of Long Beach. They brought Formula One here beginning in 1976. Mario Andretti winning in 77 and then winning three more times when the champ cars arrived in 1984. Let's meet the man now standing by with Derek Daly. And Bob, there's been some fan favorites here at Long Beach over all the years, but none more than the man beside me here, Mario Andretti. Mario, I know you love to soak up the atmosphere. You are pestered for autographs everywhere you go. But there are still people here, Mario, that think your win in Formula One defined this race in American motorsports. Well, I don't know if that's the case, but if it is, uh, obviously, uh, I'll take that. But the bottom line and the most important thing is that uh, this event has really taken off over the years. and. Uh, it's electrifying to be here. I mean, there's so much energy. Uh, you almost just feel so welcome because the city has been such a perfect host. So on the overall, you can see that people just want to be here. Uh, this is uh, just, this is awesome. And I know yesterday in the historic Formula One demonstration, you were back in the Lotus 79, the car you won the world championship in. And originally, everybody was to have no helmets and wave to the crowd. You put your helmet on and said you weren't going to do a demonstration. You were going to go for a blast as fast as you could go. You couldn't help yourself yesterday. Well, that was my chance to pass all those guys, you know. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't have a helmet on, so I knew that uh, they didn't want to get those rocks thrown at them directly. But anyway, uh, yeah, I had a ball, and, and I, I warned the owner, Duncan Dayton. I said, Dayton, I said, uh, yeah, you, you don't worry. If I, if I use some revs, he said, just go for it. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's just a great feeling. And the car was just prepared immaculately. It was almost like uh, every bit as good as it was when I drove it then. So I, I certainly got a kick out of that. That was great. And, of course, when Mario came in, he got a rounding reception from everybody. Everybody stood on the grandstands because just the mystique and nost nostalgic value of seeing those Formula One cars was exceptional. Absolutely exceptional. Thanks, Derek. Still passing after all these years is Mario Andretti. Here's a look at the Formula One history here at Long Beach. Mario Andretti winning in 1977. The late Gilles Villeneuve in a Ferrari in 1979. Nelson Piquet, Alan Jones, Nicky Lauda, and John Watson in a great drive in a McLaren. Many of those cars are on hand this weekend. They've had a number of parades and even a race this morning. 
A great, great day for all of us to see the cars in action, including this Tyrrell being driven by our own Derek Daly, who had five races in that very car back in 79 and 80. We'll be back to Long Beach. Beautiful look down on the shoreline drive of Long Beach, California. Front straightaway at the Toyota Grand Prix of Long Beach. The driver parade has just concluded. Drivers will be headed for their cars. But there has been news made this weekend. There was a big ownership meeting on Friday, or make that yesterday, Saturday, here at Long Beach. And with more on that story, here's Derek Daly. Bob, John Lopes is the Vice President of Racing Operations for CART. He also chairs the franchise board meetings. And I know, John, you, there's been lots of rule changes over the winter time, but there's an ongoing process. But you had a very interesting meeting yesterday and some interesting information that you want to share with us. Yes, Derek. I mean, it is a step-by-step -step process as we, uh, we're changing the culture here in CART. But to the credit of the franchise owners, uh, two very big things happened yesterday. The first is they voted unanimously to include all of the new owners that have invested their money and their uh, sponsorship efforts into the series to expand the board to, to 19 full voting members. But probably the most significant thing in a, in a huge cultural shift for CART is the franchise board voted uh, to move all engine related rules and matters over to management and remove themselves from that process which of course create creates a, a chance for us to speak out to the engine manufacturers in the world and say we've got our house in order and it's now uh, being managed the way it should be managed john do we take it that then there will be more similar meetings we could have more dramatic changes like this because this is a big change well it, it is a big change and it's a step-by-step -step change uh, i think uh, over time what's happening is uh, management is being entrusted with the bigger decisions of uh, the series that traditionally have been with the franchise owners it will be a process the next big step derek will be cost cutting measures sometime in the near future thank you john thank interesting you. that all these rules keep changing for the betterment of cart thank you Thank you, Derek. Of course, it gives us a new element to our next race, coming to you from the Indy Circuit at Brands Hatch in England. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Here are our Bridgestone keys to the race. 90 lap schedule. The mandatory pit interval is 28 laps, meaning you must pit each 28 laps for a full four tire change and fuel if you desire. That means a three pit stop minimum race. Count backwards by 28 lap increments from 90, and that gives you the opening of the first window on lap six. But Scott, you're hearing that may be a little too early for some of these teams. I was talking with Ray Lito of Team Ray Hall. Their concern is even though that opens at six, we don't want to see a yellow at six. We'd like to see more 10 or 11. We'd be very comfortable with that. That would work into our plans because this pit lane is so long. It is very long. You take a long time to get up and down the pit lane in addition to the time you spend stationary. Let's get more with Calvin Fish. Well, Bob, there's been a lot of discussion lately about whether these pit stop windows should go away. We'll try and get a driver's perspective here. Alex Tagliani, great qualifying run yesterday. But first and foremost, if they do change this ruling and allow the pit windows to go away, do you think I'll make for better racing? I think so. I think, um, I mean, a lot of the people have an um, opinion that, uh, you know, like this pit window should be uh, open. And uh, I think what it's going to do is you're going to see different cars on the track with uh, different configuration, you know, like the age of the tire will be different. Some are going to be light, some are going to be heavy. And uh, hopefully we'll see more passing like that. Talk quickly about your qualifying run this weekend. New engineering team had a big change around last week, but it's all come together coming off that podium run. You got to be happy to start in the second row. Yeah, it's very, very nice for the Johnson Control team. I mean, we um, it's a young team. Uh, we're still, um, you know, working on some of the aspect of the team to make it uh, a very competitive team. But, uh, you know, finishing third, qualifying third again, it's uh, really good for this young team. Well done, Tag. Good luck this afternoon. He was actually second fastest amongst the drivers. Paul Tracy locked into the front row from his Saturday, uh, Friday qualifying time. But the man who was quicker than everyone stands by with Derek Daly. And the man everybody will chase is, in fact, Michel Jourdain. Uncharted waters here. You came here seven years ago as a 19-year-old, made your debut. Today, you're the fastest man on the field. Do you, do you sense a bit of pressure on you, that the focus is going to be so much on you and see how you perform under that, impression, under that pressure? Well, of course, there's, I mean, you're in the front and you're going to stay in the front, you know, but I think we have the car, it's good pressure because, I mean, when you have a car to stay in the front, it's okay, you know, if the car is the team did a great job. I mean, last year, Jimmy got in the pole, the car, I mean, we've been fast in the first two races, but I think we have a better car than the last couple of races. So I love this track and hopefully we can get a, our first win today. Good luck, Michelle. Thanks, Eric. What a moment it would be for him, not only having his team around him he's been with for so, been with for so long, but his father and uncle here as well. 
Now back to pit strategy and how it blew up the early rounds for Sebastian Bourdais. Pole in the season opener in St. Petersburg, Florida. But his team chose not to pit when the window opened under caution. Came in later, he came back out full of fuel, cold tires, and was blown away. He later dropped farther back in the pack when he had an accident trying to recover. Monterey, second round, second pole, second problem. First pit stop under yellow, he did not come in. Best I can tell, Sebastian didn't hear the instruction to pit. Now we're in exactly the same situation as St. Pete, and I didn't want to be in this one. And once again, he went out and tried to make up ground, touched the wall, and his race was over. A few points from St. Pete, none from Monterey. Let's go to Derek Daly. Here with the man who, at the start of this season, Bruno, Many people thought you would be the championship favorite. A little bit of a struggle in the first two races, but now you're faster than your teammate. Year three in these championships have been good for you in the past. Do you get the feeling you can begin to control this if you can score a win here? Uh, I hope that you can do a good race today. You've been fast on the both days. First day I was second fastest, second day I was third, but I'm starting fourth. I think the Pacific Carney Mahas car is very good and I hope you can go forward. Good, thank you. Of course, Bruno's teammate is the young French rookie Sebastien Bourdais, who for the first time this year is not on the pole. Well, Bruno Junquera has some pressure on him this year, but he also has a history of coming through in his third year in any series he has raced in. South African Formula 3, two years in the series, took the championship. FIA Formula 3000, two years and then the championship. This is his third year in the champ cars. Now let's talk about the pit lane here at Long Beach. Last year, Cristiano D'Amato, the eventual series champion, came in here on a streak of three successive victories, but going for his fourth into the pit lane, he went right into the path of Adrian Fernandez, and D'Amato's race was over. His crew downcast. Fernandez continued. Let's go to Calvin Fish with him. Well, it was not an easy year for Adrian Fernandez last year, but Adrian, you've come back strong here. Good result down in Monterey and a good qualifying run here yesterday. Yeah, that's the momentum that we want to carry over uh, this race in, Toronto, in uh, Long Beach. Uh, the car has been feeling good, and yeah, I think if we keep learning every race, I think we should be good. Talk about the traffic situation here, very tight confines around the streets. How patient do you have to be today? Well, you have to be very patient, but I think the tighter part is going to be on the pit, so that's where... You know, it's uh, always there is some, uh, some trouble, so hopefully we will go clean this year. Hopefully they'll have a clean run, but if they do get on that podium, they're going to be drinking some Takari beer, which is the official beer of Long Beach, boys. Ah, official imported beer of the Toyota Grand Prix of Long Beach. The last owner-driver to win the Champ Car Championship, in case you were wondering, Bobby Rahal back in 1992. Lots more to come in our pre-race show here at the Toyota Grand Prix of Long Beach. We'll be back in just a moment. go faster. Welcome back live to Long Beach, California in our Speed Channel coverage of round three of the Bridgestone presents the Champ Car World Series powered by Ford, the Toyota Grand Prix of Long Beach. We hope you were with us earlier today here on Speed Channel for round two of the Toyota Atlantic Championship. It was dominated by the man standing by with Calvin Fish. Well, he was certainly faster than anyone else this morning, Bob. A.J. Almondinger, you won the Barber Dodge Pro Series last year on the cart ladder system. First win in Toyota on Atlantic. It has to feel great. Oh, it was amazing. It was, a, it was a total team effort, team Roo Sport. Carl Russo, the owner, gave me the opportunity. The car was great the whole weekend, and uh, we just put it together and uh, had a flawless race. Great run for AJ. His teammate Aaron Justice was second. It was a Roo Sport 1 2. We may see many more of, this se of those for this season, Bob. We might indeed. Yeah! There is team owner Carl Russo, who was driving his own cars last year. He's got two hot shoes in them this year. Almondinger, a record pole position, and leading every lap to put himself firmly in the run for the championship. There's Jimmy Vassar. If you're into numerology, he was wearing number 12 when he won this race. Today is his 12th start to be performed by actress and vocalist Katrina Carlson. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming who 
whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star spangled banner yet wave or the land of the free and the home of the brave. What a great way to wrap up pre-race ceremonies here at the 29th Toyota Grand Prix of Long Beach. The drivers are now in their cars, sharing those final moments with their teams and with themselves before the race to come. One of the biggest races of the year. We'll be back to Long Beach in just a moment. Stay with us. Your engines. Oh, let's rock and roll this place. For three decades, one set of American city streets has hosted the world's best race drivers. In the early 1970s, promoter Chris Pook began the transformation of Long Beach, California from a seedy port into a racing mecca. Pook's dream became reality in 1975. A year later, Long Beach joined the Formula One calendar, highlighted by a 1977 win by American world champion Mario Andretti. Beginning in 1984, the kart champ cars arrived at the beach, led once again by Andretti, who won three more times, son Michael, who won in 1986 and again 16 years later, and Al Unser Jr., who dominated the race with six wins. Over the last 28 years, Long Beach has become renowned as a race won by the quick and the daring, drivers with sharp reactions and sharper elbows, a race that rewards aggression. Today, the Champ Car Series' most aggressive personality and winningest active driver, Paul Tracy, takes aim at history by remaining undefeated with his third straight victory at the same track where he won his first 11 seasons ago at the beach. There are races, there are big races, and then there are events like the one you're about to see. Round three of the 2003 Bridgestone presents the Champ Car World Series powered by Ford, the 29th annual Toyota Grand Prix of Long Beach. Over the past three decades, this event has become more than just a race, more than just the economic engine that has revitalized the city of Long Beach, California, the state's third largest. It is a happening, the place to be and be seen. But the celebrity spotting is now done. The drivers are in their cars and on track for round three of the champ car season. And there is the coolest cat on the premises. Winner of the first two races of 2003, he will start on the outside of the front row, the same position he launched from to his two previous victories. He's looking for history here today, and his name is Paul Tracy. Here's what's at stake. Two victories in his career thus far. A third would tie him with the great Mario Andretti for champ car victories. And that is second all time to Al Unser Jr., the king of Long Beach, who won this race six times. On board with Tracy. To his left is a great story. And we begin with our starting grid powered by Ford. On pole, it took him 123 career starts to get there. But Michelle Jourdain Jr., third quickest in the morning warm-up, is on pole for the first time in his career. Next to him, Tracy going for the hat trick of victories to start the year. 
On row two, Alex Tagliani, fifth quickest in the warm-up. He'll start next to Bruno Junqueira, the best qualifying performance in three races this season for the Brazilian. On row three, Sebastian Bourdais, not on pole for the first time this year. That may be a good thing for the young Frenchman. We'll talk more about that later. He'll start next to Canadian Patrick Carpentier, who was second quickest in the warm-up this morning to his teammate, Tracy. On row four, Adrian Fernandez, fourth quickest in the warm-up. will start next to Spaniard, Oriol Serbia, to the pit lane, and Derek Daly. Michel Jourdain on the pole will have intense pressure on him. We're going to see how he can handle that type of pressure. Tagliani, that team, the, uh, the Johnson Controls team, is only 113 days old. They will depend again on Tagliani to deliver just like he did in Mexico. And then you have Bourdais. Maybe the pressure in the spot is off him. That might be a relief for him because he's not on the front row. We'll see as it unfolds. Thank you, Derek. Moving to row five of the grid, Roberto Moreno who ran this race back in 1986 and is back here again, fast as ever. He'll start next to dashing British rookie Darren Manning, his best qualifying performance of his young champ car career. On row six will be Mario Dominguez with one victory under his belt last year, the Jim Truman Rookie of the Year of 2002. He'll step next, start next to young American rookie Ryan hunter Ray driving for Stefan Johansson. On row seven, Patrick Lamarier, 35-year-old Frenchman who once lived here in Long Beach during his days driving in the Toyota Atlantic Championship. He'll start alongside the 1996 winner and series champion who sat on pole for this race last year and finished second, Jimmy Vassar. On row eight, Mario Haberfeld crashed in the morning warm-up. He'll be out there next to Portuguese rookie Tiago Matero driving for the great Emerson Fittipaldi and the only man to lead a race thus far this year after Paul Tracy and Sebastian Bourdais to Calvin Fish. Bob, it's a blend of youth and experience on row five. The veteran Roberto Moreno finally getting to grips with that Lola. He starts ninth alongside the young Englishman, Darren Manning. He's the fastest rain out in the field. But look for Jimmy Vassar. He's been dubbed Mr. America. And let's see if he can come through the charge and get to the front of the field today. He starts 14th. He was on the pole here last year, Bob. All right, thank you, Calvin. On row nine, Rodolfo Levine of Mexico, driving for Derek Walker, will start alongside Joel Camatias, the young Swiss rookie driving for Dale Coyne. And on row 10, Camatias' teammate, Alex Jung of Malaysia, with a year of Formula One behind him, he has come to make his way in the champ cars in 2003. Let's take a closer look now at the 1.968 mile 11 turn circuit with Tommy Kendall and Scott Pruitt. We take a look going down into turn one right here. Heavy braking, looking for a little passing. Back through the back, two, three, four, five. Everybody's about the same speed. Seven, eight, same thing. Everybody's carrying about the same speed. But as you get down into here, eight, nine, and 10, this complex, this really shows the good guys, the fast guys, from the guys that aren't going slow. If you get it right through here, you're gonna be fast. Place to watch, power down off the hairpin. It's the only good passing opportunity here at Long Beach. Now let's talk about the pit lane. It is problematic here at Long Beach. Just ask Michael Andretti in black and Paul Tracy, who came together back in the early 90s. In 91, a much more dramatic moment for Michael Andretti when he was hit with Emerson Fittipaldi. And then last year, Cristiano D'Amata, going for his fourth victory in a row, collided with Adrian Fernandez. He was done. Fernandez continued. There's a look at the pit lane, the longest of the season, 2,400 feet long along Shoreline Drive here in Long Beach. When you enter and when you stop, you're gonna be there a long time. That's that's a fact. We're looking at St. Petersburg, about 18 seconds without this plus a stop here, 28 seconds they're gonna spend up and down pit lane, not inclusive of the stop. This is where these guys have to make a decision to stay out or to come in. Let's look at our Bridgestone keys to the race. 90 laps ahead of us, the pit interval, the mandatory pit stop must come every 28 laps, and you must leave with four tires that were not on the car when you came in. Count backwards from 90 and 28 lap increments. The early window will open at lap six, but we understand the teams are very leery of that first window opening at lap six. That's cutting it a bit fine. That's cutting it a bit fine. We talked about Ray, Team Ray Hall as well as some of the other ones. That's just a little too early. If it comes out at yellow, uh, yellow comes out at six, it's going to be a very difficult decision. They said that we can make a very easy decision if it comes out at 10. We will come in for sure. At a 
quick look on board with Paul Tracy going for his third consecutive victory. He was the provisional pole sitter on Friday, nipped for pole by Michelle Jourdain Jr. on Saturday. Jourdain finished second to Tracy in those first two races of the year, and as a result, he is just 11 points behind Tracy in the championship fight. Then Alex Tagliani and Bruno Giancaro. We are in turn nine. This time, when they swing onto Shoreline Drive, we should get the green flag. And watch for a lot of action going into turn one. Heavy braking, very tight turn to the left down there. And Tommy, you and I both know we've had some experience down there. It can bottle up pretty fast. I tell you, look for Paul Tracy. He kind of tipped his hand. The outside is the preferred braking zone. I expect him to go into, uh, he has a mark picked out. He'll go to that. Oh, he's already got the jump on Jordan. so. I was, I was gonna say, I think he'll pick his mark and try to go around the outside, but he's clear into turn one. A fairly ragged start, but the green flag waves. Paul Tracy takes the inside line. Jordan will give up the corner. Paul Tracy had a big jump on his start. I'm actually surprised the green flew. Get down around through the, through the fountain turn. Alongside the Aquarium of the Pacific. Added a couple of years ago to the skyline of Long Beach. Run down to turn six, a left-hander onto Pine Avenue in Long Beach. See Tagliani protecting his position a little bit there as he entered. A little bit of heat from behind. Now the right-hander, Jacara. Onto Seaside Way, passing under the walkthrough to the Long Beach Convention Center. Jacara made a move on Tagliani at the start as well. Right-hander at turn nine. Now the long left-hander to the hairpin. One of the trademarks of Long Beach. They swing onto Shoreline Drive and go up through the gearbox. You, you said you were surprised to see the green there on uh, on that start, Scott. That's, that's the experience. Michael, Michelle Jordan has a lot of starts, not that many up front. One thing you know in Long Beach, they're throwing the green. Paul said, I'm going. Derek has a little bit more on that. Indeed, I'm here with Bobby Reho. Bobby. Did you read that as a legal start? Well, I think the pole center is supposed to lead, but uh, I don't know. We've asked for a, a ruling. We'll see. Yes, we will see as this goes on. I kind of expected Bobby to be a little bit hotter about that. It was a very ragged start. Nonetheless, we are underway. There's Alex Tagliani to the right of your screen. Let's take another look at the replay. Huge jump. Well, that seems wow. pretty black and white right there. Paul Tracy clearly ahead of Michelle Jourdain. And PT did exactly what he needed to do. You know, it's up to the starter to work to ride off or to tell him he can't do it. If he can pull one off like that, all the better. Yeah. It looks like he shouldn't do this, but as a race car driver, Tommy, you and I both, I mean, if, if you can pull it off, do it. Well, there's nothing to talk about now because if, if the starter didn't throw the green, he could have warned Paul. But when he throws the green, he's basically saying, I approve that start. Absolutely. And recall last year on the Milwaukee Mile when the same thing happened, Adrian Fernandez was on pole. Paul Tracy jumped on it when the green flag waved, clearly led the field across the start line and went on to win that race. And this is when Team Ray Hall should be telling Michelle, it's okay, Michelle, just focus on your race, stay in your game. It's easy to get a little bit ragged. He's going, oh, I can't believe the start. I can't believe they threw the green. Stay in your game. Focus on your race. The Ray Hall surely every race shows how fast they are in the pits. See if they can let it come back to him. That's one thing he has in his hip pocket. For that to work out, if he can stay close to Paul and come in on the first stop on any stop, close to Paul Tracy, the Team Ray Hall, he got the team, has, been, has the lowest average pit stop and lowest cumulative pit stop time for the whole season. They did the same thing last year with Jimmy Vassar. So if he can be close enough to Paul and they come in, he can have, hopefully have the team do the hard work for him and leave him in, in front. Here's Bruno Jacquera, preseason title favorite, but he's been a little bit struggling to get out of the box, shall we say. Outshined by his teammate Sebastian Bourdain qualifying the first two races. This weekend, he outqualified Bourdain for the first time. These guys, Bruno and Newman Haas, they need to get in just to a good rhythm. They need to get just a, a good race under their belt and see if they can start stretching that out. Down into turn one. Now we're hearing reports Bruno has told his crew that he has flat spotted the right front tire. So depending on how badly it's flat spotted, once you have a flat spot, it wants to stop again every time it hits that flat spot. It tends to get worse and worse. So he's got to balance the need to run quickly and keep those guys behind him. 
All right, let's take another look at the start. Here they come off the corner with Jordan in red and white leading. I'm looking for the flag man to the left of the screen. Paul's on it. Paul is gassing it right there, and the flag is waving, so I rest my case, I guess. There's the view from the flag stand. I don't think Bobby Rahel is going to win that argument. That's Jamie Wilbur, our flag man. Unless I'm mistaken, he is he is the man in whose sole discretion the race starts or it doesn't. Yeah, exactly. The uh, thing is, it looks like Paul just got a slight jump. It might have been an earlier flag than Michelle was expecting. We'll be back live to Long Beach in a moment. After dire weather forecasts all week saying this might be the first Toyota Grand Prix of Long Beach to be rained on, we are dry and glad of it. Now let's take another look at the start from onboard Paul Tracy. There's pole sitter Michelle Jordan Jr. up ahead. Watch for the green flag. Yeah, you're right here. Well, definitely waving when he got there. On board Bruno Junquera. Now Jimmy Basso, starting 14. Pretty much an empty street on fr in front of him when he came off the hairpin. Now on board Patrick Lemarier's car in 13. Now let me page through the rule book. A new rule in place this year says once the green flag waves, either front row starter may lead to the line, and the judge has left the building. We're seeing Jourdain actually run about a tenth quicker per lap than Paul Tracy over the last three laps. He's been about tenth quicker as well as having the fastest lap of the race so far. So if the, he can just hang with Paul, like Tommy was talking about earlier, he'll have a good shot to at least make that pass into pits. It's so difficult to pass on Long Beach. Of 190 racing laps coming into this weekend, Paul Tracy had led 140 of them. Let's get more on his situation now with Calvin. Well, the team has asked Paul to say fuel. There's no change on the mixture setting that he can do, but certainly back off a little bit on res, but he's radio back saying, I can't do that. Michelle is pushing me too hard. I need the fuel I'm using. The one ace of Tracy's sleeve is the fact that he does have four good sets of Bridgestone tires after the problems that he struggled through in qualifying yesterday. Let's go down to double D, Derek Dale. In third place, the man in third place, Bruno Junquera, has radioed in that he has flat spot on the right front. He was concerned. The team said, don't worry about it, just take it easy. Interesting enough, the Newman Haas team told both their drivers on the warm-up laps, the parade laps, to save as much fuel as they could. Let me get back to Paul Tracy's tires as you take a look at Bruno Junquera at work in his cockpit with our shifter cam. In Monterey, in our last round, Paul Tracy crashed in Saturday morning practice, did not take part in Saturday afternoon qualifying, still started on the front row with four fresh sets of tires for the race. He said it was key to his second straight victory. I'm surprised more teams haven't picked up on that a little bit here in Long Beach and saved tires for race day. Well, it, it goes both ways, because track position being so important in these races, uh, Paul, by locking in the front row on Friday, he saved the set yesterday. But you have to decide, do I want to throw two sets at it both days and get up in the top three or four? You're better off, even if you're having to defend the guy from the guys behind you, than trying to come from 10th forward, even with sticker. So the guy on Friday, by locking in that front row, has a huge advantage. I think you'll see lots of guys starting to use only one set if they're on pole on Friday. On board with Bruno Shakira. Get a real good chance to see. And now he goes to the hairpin. Look at that crank. Full right hand around. Just goes to the hairpin, hard on the gas. He does it a little bit differently. If you watch Paul Tracy, his years of experience here, and I, you know the guys out here used to do the same thing in the hairpin. Brutal. When Keep they got up. to the turning point, they would put all the steering in at one time and then go to the gas. It's just a slight difference, but it's just the confidence knowing that right rear is going to clear on the inside. And whereas Bruno dials it in and then he goes all the way. Just a slight fraction. I think that's such an important corner. The guys that win here are the guys that can pass here. The guys that can pass here are the guys that get off the hairpin the best. The top three men on the racetrack, Tracy, Jordan, and Junquera, are the top three men in the championship coming into this weekend. We're working lap number 10, meaning the first of our pit windows is now open should a yellow come out. Now we talk about some of the changes in cart this year. A big piece for here in Long Beach is the fact that no more traction control. A lot of the teams are saying, man, this is a lot 
a lot more difficult to get the car set up right. I think it's terrific. It comes back into the cockpit. These guys have got to control their foot on the throttle. They need to be careful with those Bridgestones. You can burn them up pretty severely if you're not careful coming off that hairpin, and then you're going to be toast by the end of your run. Well, it's something the track control Paul's crash yesterday in qualifying is just that. Coming off turn five, it's very off camber. Right out at the edge of the road is right where the boost hit. The back end snapped out and he kissed the wall. Last year, the track control would have dampened that. Would have dampened that right out. Talking a little bit to Tagliani is Johnson control teams. And this is one thing to stay on Tag, too. He's been having a great run. But Tag's been one of those guys that can be volatile. He's shown a lot of maturity this year. And hopefully you can see that. Unfortunately, had a crash early on. Lap six down in uh, down in St. Petersburg. Had a great comeback in Mexico a couple weeks ago. Now he has to get a little bit of that momentum and get some good finishes. Like Jimmy Vassar, he has won on these streets in the Toyota Atlantic Championship. The top step of the cart ladder series to the champ cars. Calvin Fish. Well, look for Tag to really come on strong towards the end of this run. He ran some very fast lap times yesterday on tires that had 25 laps on them, Bob. And it really had the team beaming with smiles. So look as this run continues for Tag to come closer to Junquera. Now we're getting a lot of radio chatter right now telling the guys to save fuel. Both players' cars and both Newman Haas cars are saying save fuel, save fuel. So it'd be interesting to see if Derek and Calvin can ask the guys, everybody has about the same range. There isn't the kind of adjustability on fuel you had when you had the engine wars, but they do have a little bit of choice in terms of different torque settings and their driving style and saving fuel. I'm wondering why fuel is such a problem here. On board with Mario Dominguez, last year's Rookie of the Year, currently yeah. shown in 10th place. It all comes back right now. I talked to the Cosworth guys, everybody has the same. They have five different settings for the torque. Does not change fuel mileage. The fuel mileage comes in the actual cockpit. These guys, I spent a lot of years, we worked a lot over the years trying to get better fuel mileage. What you tend to do is, everybody thought short shifting was the way to go. That's not the way to go. What you have to do is let off early. Don't use the brakes, let off the, off the gas at the end of straight a bit early. Wait for a minute and then get on the brakes. That's where you're gonna save the fuel. Ahead of Dominguez on the road is Roberto Moreno, running behind Adrian Fernandez. Moreno fourth in the championship. He has not qualified well through the first two races of this year, but he has raced very well from outside the top 10 into the top six. He started ninth today. See if he can improve in the championship. We've got a break coming up, and we'll be back with more live coverage of the Toyota Grand Prix of Long Beach. Pit stop not far away. We're working lap number 13. Stay with us. Com to cast your vote, and the deadline is coming up this week, so vote soon. Welcome back to the streets of Long Beach, California. Bob Varsha, Tommy Kendall, and Scott Pruitt with you. Calvin Fish and Derek Daly are in the pit lane. You ride with Paul Tracy, who at start finish had less than a one second lead over Michelle Jordan Jr., our pole sitter in this 29th annual event. Bruno Jacquera is eight and a half seconds behind the race leader. So Tracy and Jordan are inexorably drawing away from the field into a race of their own. There is Patrick Carpentier, Paul Tracy's teammate at Players Foresight, currently in sixth position between Sebastian Bourdais and Oriol Serbia. Calvin Fish has more on Carpentier. Down here with his engineer, Mike Cannon. Michael, we hear a lot of teams talking about fuel here. Is it a big issue to even complete 28 laps? I mean, I think, uh, you know, the guys that are running up front, like Tracy and Zerdane, I don't think they're going to worry about that. They're not in a position to, to get past on the track if they come in a lap earlier. Uh, for people like ourselves, we're behind um, uh, Bordet, behind Jokera, and we know they're saving fuel trying to make it to 28. So we got to do it. How does a driver save fuel? There's no mixture setting you can work on in the car. How does he do it? Just with revs and short shifting, essentially? Exactly. You start shifting a couple lights early. Uh, you're a little more progressive on the throttle out of the corners, and that saves a surprising amount of fuel. As you can tell, fuel is definitely an issue here today, Bob. I would imagine those shift lights on the wheel are probably a big help in doing that when you're not trying to watch a tachometer. They, they are a big help, but as he said, short shifting, in all the years of testing that I did, short shifting never saved fuel, ever saved fuel. It was more letting off early, coasting the car through the turn. That was where you're going to save fuel. One of the guys I've been impressed with is Michel Jordan. He's hanging tough. 
But he's hanging very tough. And uh, back to the fuel thing, Moreno was a guy who was always known as a guy who was pretty good on fuel. And what uh, Mike Cannon was talking about in terms of the progressive fuel in a carburetor, you have what's called the accelerator pumps. They pump extra fuel in when you're changing the throttle position. On fuel injection, it's called A, acceleration enrichment. If you modulate the throttle and pump it a little bit during the corner, that will fill a coffee can in a hurry. A lot of extra fuel if you're if you're changing the throttle position mid-corner. When you get to the gas, if you open it smoothly, you can save fuel that way and by coasting, like Scott said. There is Sebastian Bourdais, pole sitter for the first two races of the year, currently in fifth place. By far the best place rookie in the field. The next rookie is Darren Manning, currently running 11. As you go back on board with tag. I talked to the Newman Haas team, and they actually felt that this was was going to be a good race for for Sebastian. The fact that you're not starting up front. When you start on pole, there's a lot of pressure that goes with that. The eyes are on you, and when you're leading the race, if you're not sure when to when to come pit, that becomes difficult. Here, now he's in a position, not quite as much pressure. He can run his own race, be heads up, be smart, get to the checkered flag. Sweeping through turn one into the fountain turn, just outside the aquarium of the Pacific. My favorite part of the racetrack right here. Turn one to turn six. I'm not sure the drivers would agree with me. Oh, but this is a blast. Fun. And out there in a Trans Am car, right there, the track really falls away. You gotta be right on top of the car. You smack the wall if you're not careful. Well, thanks for reminding me. Stand by later this evening. Our own Scott Pruitt will go for his second straight victory in the Trans Am series for the BF Goodrich Tires Cup here on Speed Channel. Starting from pole, is our Starting recall? from pole. A nice silvery bullet. Sometimes it's better to be good than lucky. I'd be the silver Jaguar bullet. <laughs> A very touching picture of the yeah, paper. Don't it. even bust <laughs> on me, man. Scott, about after don't qualifying. It was a really tender moment you shared with yeah. Tommy Dreeser, captured by the photographer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Tommy I'm Dreeser looking for that Scott photographer. Pruitt. I don't know what he did to me, but I mean, what, what I did to him, but boy, that's not a. It was all warm and fuzzy. Yeah, it was. You may find it on the internet soon. <laughs> There's Roberto Moreno, Calvin Fish. We're down here with Keith Wiggins. Wiggy. A lot of talk about fuel today, and Roberto Moreno has won races by conserving fuel. How's he doing these days? Well, obviously, there's slightly less uh, gain than there used to be, but uh, as you say, he's one of the good ones. So uh, His leg is a bit older. It takes longer to put it down or what? <laughs> no, he's more gentle on it. So, uh, But obviously, with the windows now and the, without the fuel mixture, but it's quite a stretch to get to the 28, so I'm sure there'll be a few different strategies that, that uh, unfold. Hey, thanks a lot. Roberto Moreno having a strong run this weekend, qualifying up in the top ten for the first time. Let's go down to Derek. With Paul Gentilozzi, the owner of the Johnson Controls team, I know you're proud that 113 days ago you didn't have a team and it's going this well, but we hear that your car is set up more for the long run, Paul. What does that mean? Well, yesterday we spent a lot of time running with old tires, 28, 30, 35 lap tires with a light fuel load. And if you can make your car fast then, that's really when you can make time. So we did some aero things, especially on the rear wicker, to make a good car at the last 10 laps of the fuel run. Good. We'll watch to see how it unfolds. Thank you, Paul. Not the, not the fact that he's just my team owner, but I've been very impressed with the Rocket Sports Johnson Controls team. I mean, as Derek was saying, this team is not very old, and they're showing, a lot, showing up a lot of these top guns. In a very, very high-tech series, you ride in the Johnson Controls Lola. In fact, you ride on top of it, looking at Alex Tagliani. Our early SpeedTV.com poll results, 66% of you say yes, Paul Tracy can win his third in a row. Welcome back live here on Speed Channel. The round three of the Bridgestone presents the Champ Car World Series powered by Ford, the Toyota Grand Prix of Long Beach. Home race for Pacific Air, based here in Southern California. And that, of course, means Bruno Jacquera, who drives the Pacific Air Lola for Newman Haas Racing. And he appears to be moving backwards, Tommy. Well, he's been planted of a, a flat spotted right front. Recently, a lot of understeer, and whatever the reason, Alex Tagliani has gotten around him, and now Bourdais is knocking at the back door. We are working lap number 21. Remember, the pit window is 28, so everyone will pit, it appears, on lap 28 if we don't get a yellow between now and then. This will be real interesting to see. I wonder how many people might roll the dice, because Long Beach is so tough and so tight in pit lane. When you come in, everybody at once, you actually might lose a second or two just getting caught up with somebody and potentially taking you out of the race. So some of these teams might be looking, well, maybe we we'll want to come in one lap early, stay out of the mess, don't take a chance. That might not be the smartest thing to do pure on, pit on, on, on time on the track, but it may 
may pan out better overall. Up and down the pit wall, the crews are getting ready, knowing how important these stops are to their drivers. The moment of truth is coming. If you see anybody in before lap 28, that is a big disadvantage in terms of they'll be on cold tires when the other guys are on their last lap of hot tires. So if anyone comes in early, that's going to be a big disadvantage. Someone has. Rodolfo Levine has pitted. Derek Daly. One of the teams going to take a big gamble here is the Patrick team with Serbia. They want to stay on lap 28 to come in. They believe, however, he will roll down the pit lane on fumes. And they're afraid to tell him that in case he backs off because he can't quite keep with the leaders. <laughs> I don't know, you know, when you're telling a driver, hey, you might make it in on fumes or you might not make it in at all, that's kind of a, that's kind of a stupid call. If you, I mean, taking a chance to drop out of the race because you ran out of fuel is not the thing to do. I had that happen to me in Des Moines in 94. The guys tell me, kept telling me, hammer it after every yellow. The first thing I knew we were tight on fuel was when I ran out. Levine comes and out that and race, immediately guys. finds himself holding up traffic. He's talking about it right in the middle of it. You're on cold tires, all these other guys are on warm tires, plus you have a full load of fuel. Look at the difference in speed as Levine struggles to get his car up to speed. Unbelievable. He struggles to get his car up to speed. Oh! <laughs> on Big hot save. Tires. Forget getting up to speed, just keep it off the wall. There's Darren Manning at the middle of your screen driving for Walker Racing with U.S. Air Force colors on the car this weekend. Congratulations to the team. Get settled back down. That's good. They've been focusing, the Walker team has been focusing on Levin just saying, you know what, just take it easy, let's get to the checkered flag, let's get a couple races under our belt. He's been struggling in the first few races. Okay, six laps to the end of the pit window. Calvin Fish. Well, I just checked in with Paul Tracy's team. Todd Malloy, his new engineer, said we're hoping to get to lap 28. They're monitoring it closely. They believe they will just squeak through. They do not want to pit a lap earlier than Michelle Jourdain. And this is where PT showed his speed. And when I talked to him after uh, Monterey, he said the only time he really extended himself was before the stops to buy himself a little cushion. And that last lap was his quickest lap thus far at 10.1, four tenths quicker than Jordan. But Jordan is not giving up. He's trying to answer back. Be interested to in see what the times are on this lap. Gigante Car with Michelle Jordan, very pleased with the performance this weekend. Very happy with the traction. They felt very confident going into this race. Interesting it, thing happens when a young driver, even though he's been in the series a long time, when you get a whiff of the front, when you finally feel like, hey, I can race these guys, and Jordan answers back with another 10-1. Paul ran another 10-1. Jordan answers back with a 10-1 as well, holding the gap constant. The winningest active driver in the series in a duel with a young driver yet to win his first champ car race in his 123rd start, Michelle Jourdain Jr. No, it's got to be a tremendous confidence builder for him knowing if I stay close, I know that my guys in the pits can get me out ahead of Tracy. A little, another interesting note here, I was talking to Michelle just for a minute, and he said, the guy who taught me most about how to get around Long Beach fast, Jimmy Vassar, my teammate from last year. Of course, Vassar, so disappointed in that astonishing race last year. Started from pole, thought he had the race in the bag, and Michael Andretti pulled a bit of pit wizardry. We're talking about how long this pit lane is. That's exactly what happened to JV last year. That pit lane is so long, you spend so much time, because it's virtually from right there, you're running 50 miles an hour, clear down into turn one, so you're running, even if you're in pit lane here, Paul Tracy goes down a straightaway at 180, 85 miles an hour. So right there, you just saw it off to your right. That's a long time at 50 miles an hour. A 9-7 for Paul Tracy and another 10-1 from Jourdain. Fast lap of the race thus far. Tracy doing everything in his considerable powers to get away from Michelle Jourdain Jr. behind him. Just we got a note from the team, from Tracy's team. It says, we need a gap. Watch your pit board. We need to stretch a little bit of a gap. That's because they know Team Rahal is good in the pits. And this is what Paul relishes. He's had things pretty much his own way, but I, I sense that part of him wants a head-to-head -head fight to really say, hey, this is what it's all about, guys. Let's throw it all down. And it looks like they're going to clear the decks for Paul Tracy. His teammate, Patrick Carpentier, we understand, will be in momentarily. I, that might be Tagliani. Oh, Tagliani, excuse me. It's going to be Tag. I don't know if that, that's 24. That might be a little early. That's why I thought it got a little early. 
Watch how far it hurts him. Tagliani's in third, 12 seconds behind Tracy right now. But with Bruno Bourdais and Carpentier behind him, they go to 28. Chances are they'll come out ahead of Tagliani. That would not be the call I'd want to make. I want to stretch it out. There's Carpentier. Tagliani is in the pit lane. Derek Daly awaits him. Bob, he's already had fuel fluctuation problems, so he is concerned. Well, that the concern is now okay, because he was concerned he might not make it in here. On the brakes, reset the fuel, good. You can hear them say reset the fuel. He had a fuel pickup problem yesterday. But Jet Losey, Paul Jet Losey, told him he says, we just can't go any called in yesterday during qualifying. It started fluctuating. You know, the, on the telemetry they have in the pits, they can watch the fuel pressure. This is not a good thing for this team. It's going to cost them significantly as he rolls back out onto the track. Jerking around on that pit lane speed limiter. Now he comes back up to speed and heads for turn one. Meanwhile, there's Tracy. Coming around to complete lap 26. Tracy just... Day on the laps, the 9-6 last lap, a 9-5 this lap, Jordan at 10-0. So he's building that cushion he needs. Paul Tracy is in control of this race right now. They told him to stretch it out a little bit. He's gone for about seven, eight, eight tenths of a second to two and a half seconds over second place. Well, Tracy would be closer to Jordan in those cumulative pit times this season that Tommy mentioned, but he stalled in Monterey. Admittedly, he had the race in hand, but that would be brutal if it were to happen now. Yeah. That was a problem there that they found with the pit lane speed limit, which is why they had him shut it off on the last stop. A software problem, which we believe that Ford Cosworth has fixed. But look at the gap. He's built himself a nice little cushion so that this guy can just be a little bit under less pressure. This is why Paul Tracy has won as many races as he's had. This is why Jerry Forsyth is paying him the big bucks. Jerry Forsyth, players. And he's he's yeah. dialing in on 27. Early. So it'd be interesting. if anybody can go to 28, if Jordan can go to 28, that will be a big difference. And Jordan has gone by start finish. He's still on track. Calvin Fish. Well, this is going to be key. This crew has, crew has to do a great stop here. We understand there'll be no changes, just four tires, four Bridgestone tires and fuel to try and get Paul back out of here. But Michelle Jordan can lay down a quick one and make him an advantage. Good clean start, big wheel spin, Tracy underway. They had to be conservative. Paul's running for the championship. They could not take a chance on leaving him run out, letting him run out of gas on the racetrack. As Jordan's team has told him, Tracy has pitted, go like hell. So he's going to try to put in his very quickest lap. What will likely happen, could very well happen, is Paul is going to go like heck on cold tires. This will be the riskiest lap of the race for Paul Tracy. But Jordan could very well come out in front of him, and Paul is going to have to try to get by him before Jordan's tires come up to temp. <laughs> so this story might not be told till turn one after Jordan comes out. Might not be told till all the way around on Jordan's cold liar. Good cold point. Tire lap. That's what happened to Bourdais at St. Pete. These guys are going to have to be quick and clean. Jordan's on his way in. Jordan heads for the quickest pit crew in the sport the last two years running. Winners of the Craftsman Pit Stop Challenge. Here he comes. There are no changes for Jourdain during this stop. There was a celebration when they knew Tracy was coming in one lap earlier, but this must be spectacular to put him in the lead. Got the ramps up. It's quick. He overshot it just a little bit. You saw him come in, just slide. Some of the guys had to reset. Oh, Patrick Lamarier has spun down in turn one. Has he stalled? His visor is up, he stalled. There's Sebastian Bourdais in his pit. Now the yellow comes out here, Jordan will be a big winner. Adrian Fernandez in the Tecate car. Hey, the even if it's a standing yellow in turn one, that might be the only chance Paul has to get by Jordan, depending on when they come out. If the standing yellow is out for this incident, Paul cannot pass Jordan, even if he catches him there. Joel Camatias, there goes Bourdais coming off the pit lane. Patrick Carpentier, Bruno Chiquera on board half for Tracy. Ah, that is Jordan up ahead. Jordan's on cold tires, he's gonna try and make the move. 
Now this is where Paul's gonna try and down, him, down his nope. back straight. He's setting them up. Wants to get to the inside. Jordan wants to protect. Full course yellow is out. Ah. Uh, this would be the chance for Paul to make that move, and the yellow's out. Wow. And it comes out on lap 29. Woo. That's a nail biter. <laughs> Off the corner they come. The safety car will head for the racetrack while Patrick Labarier is extracted from turn one. We'll be back live to Long Beach. Welcome back live. A beautiful view of Shoreline Drive in Long Beach, California. Site for the 29th year and the 29th dry weather year for the Toyota Grand Prix of Long Beach. I'm Bob Barsha with Scott Pruitt and Tommy Kendall. Calvin Fish and Derek Daly are in the pit lane. Let's join Calvin. Oh, we're down here at PK Racing. Patrick Lamaria having problems on cold tires. Russell Cameron, what's the situation with the car? Not really sure. I think when he left the pits, he just he spun on his cold tires. I mean, we were pushing him pretty hard. And, uh, you know, maybe just a little too much, and he's fun. Team really seems to be starting to gel, though. I mean, you've got a late start to this season. Things are starting to come together for you. Well, they're coming pretty well. I mean, we've had a challenging weekend this weekend, but actually things are coming around, and, you know, Patrick's doing a great job. It's just a, it's a new team and a new situation for everyone. Okay, well, I hope they can get him fired back up. Let's go down to Derek with Bobby Rahal, I believe. The leading team here, Bobby Rahal as the owner. That was quite a nail-biter as that thing unfolded there. <laughs> Saved by the yellow. <laughs> it was going to get interesting the next corner, wasn't it? But uh, great stop by the crew. And, you know, Michelle gave us his best lap. His in lap was, or the lap before his in lap was a 9-6. So I think that's what it all, that's all it took to get ahead of Paul. Bobby, do you believe Michelle actually has the speed to pull away from Paul just a little bit? Well, there's no question that it's difficult. Uh, the turbulence off the cars that whoever's in the lead has an advantage. Or if there's a gap, you know, in front of you, uh, you can definitely go quicker. So we'll see. Thanks, Bobby. Watch Paul Tracy on this restart. He's got to get by for a bunch of reasons, and he's a little bit uh, fired up. He felt that uh, Michelle came a long way off the wall to block him right before that yellow came out. So Paul needs to get by for a lot of reasons. Not only can Jordan. Oh, look Ooh. at that. The safety yeah, that's, actually, that's actually giving Michelle a little bit of a gap to Paul. Later, 11, got sideways there. Coming at you, he's getting a good run off there. Michelle, Watch again in turn one. Michelle didn't want to find out what was going to happen uh -huh. in turn one. Exactly. But now Michelle is the only guy who went 28 laps. Of, I mean, and, and Paul didn't. So he can go two laps further now. He can go to lap 56. Paul, the furthest Paul can go, if he only goes 27, it'd be 54. If he goes to full 28, it would be 55. But and that, so that advantage in terms of one of those fast laps is only going to get greater. You think Michelle learned a bit of a lesson off the start? I think so. <laughs> want no part of that. It's turn five where Tracy hit the wall with the left rear in Saturday's second round qualifying that possibly prevented him from claiming pole position for this race. Tagliani, putting a move on Joel Camatias. We'll have now, actually. On board with Patrick Lamarier, the scientific Atlantic car from PK Racing. They're all lap cars here. Wow, straight off into the runoff. Sure, if there's a problem, or we just got down in there with Oh, uh, Adrian Fernandez on the left, Lamarier on the right. Oriel Serbia. Yeah, and the green, uh, excuse me, the uh, orange and white Vistion car for Patrick Racing. On board with Jimmy Vassar. To hear how low, how slow that. That hairpin is, it's way down in the RPM range. Kind of lugs almost coming off. Well, you know, Jimmy's uh, progress right at the center of the hairpin got, you know, everybody was checking up, so he picked up the throttle a little bit later. He was off the revs. It took a while for that boost to build. You saw Haberfeld got a little better run off. Whoa! That's Jung. Oh, I was just about to say, we still have 17 cars on the lead lap, more than a third of the way through the race. More cars That's... yellow be coming out. That's down in turn one. Just got a little, this is a pretty touchy turn. That corner claimed a couple of drivers in this morning's round two of the Toyota Atlantic Championship, including Bobby Rahal's driver, Danica Patrick, coming off a podium in the season opener in Monterey, Mexico. Once again, we are under a full course caution. As Jung climbs out to Derek Daly in the pit lane. 
Paul, we watched Tag come in three laps earlier than the leaders. Um, that's obviously a bit of a problem. Can you do something about that? Well, in the end, it's not going to hurt us because the windows are pretty variable. Yeah, we'd like to go fast. We put 31 gallons back in. We just got a little pickup issue. We don't know if it's going to equalize or if we use more fuel than we calculated early. We can get to the right windows. It just depends. The yellow fell bad for us that time. Next time, it could be in our favor. Paul, did he begin to run out of fuel? Yes, just only in high side load, high inertia situations. Let's us think that it's probably just a pickup issue. Thanks, Paul. I'm a little confused what he's talking about not hurting them. They went to third from sixth. Simple Green safety crew goes to work. That's Lon Bromley, Cam Howie, Jeff Knapp, and Lloyd Mokler. I think he means it's, one. it's not going to cause them an extra stop, but the the stopping early and, and giving away all that ground on, on the guys staying out of hot tires will definitely hurt him. He just got offline, just got in there, got offline a little too deep, had nowhere to go, stuck in the tires outside of one. Yuga's out of the car. Oh, there's Joel Camatias. We saw him drive off over in the turn six area. It appears that he has completely lost the fire. Tough lap there for Dale Coyne Racing. We'll be back. Welcome back to the streets of Long Beach, California. Speed Channel is your home for Formula One. The next round takes the teams back to the European continent, to the Enzo and Dino Ferrari circuit in Imola, Italy, for the Grand Prix of San Marino, qualifying fri uh, Friday at 8 a.m. live. Also on Saturday, and the race itself on Sunday, beginning at 7.30 a.m. live only on Speed Channel. What a season it's been in Formula One thus far. Now this is where these teams are going to have to do some real soul searching. This is that with these windows, how they're going to shake out these next couple laps are going to be critical about where you're going to want to pit and how the rest of the race is going to unfold. Well, we said the window the first time it opened was on lap six. The earliest you could go on two more stops. Now the earliest you can stop and make it on one more was lap 34. Last lap, Patrick Carpentier did just that. But that is predicated on being able to go the full 20 on the next two. And not too many people except Jordan have shown they can do that. So I might expect to see a couple cars on the next lap stopping. And I would think that's a good move. Derek? Uh, Oriol Serbia came in because he is in the window, so that's easy enough, we know that. However, Tag is still two laps short, so he cannot take advantage of this yellow, and they've even factored in a future yellow. So Tagliani in the Johnson Controls car is beginning to lose control here. He was one of the cars that pit Jimmy Vassar, Mario Dominguez, Thiago Montero pitted a lap earlier, and I think he may be giving himself a problem there. Let's go to Calvin Fish. We're down here in the players team with Michael Cannon once again. Mike, you brought Patrick in there. Lap 34 was the critical lap. You can now do it on one more stop, so really just playing the pit windows today, I guess. Yeah, very much so. If you recall your Long Beach history, I mean, Paul Tracy won this race a couple years ago doing the same thing. Neves just about won it one year, so did we, doing the same thing, if not for some problems. We're splitting strategies. I mean, Paul's on a completely different strategy. Between one of us, we're going to come out smelling like a rose. All right, mate. Well, two-car team is always an advantage, Bob. Absolutely. On board with Paul Tracy. Several other cars are also pitting. Camatias, Montero, uh, Serbia again, and one other. We'll catch you up in a minute. Back at Long Beach, just back underway, and over in turn five, you see on the left, Rodolfo Levine in the number five Corona car got into the tire wall. It looks like uh, Roberto Moreno or... One of the Herdez cars. Moreno. Oh. Coming Tough. off the stall, coming off the, they just went green. We talk about Long Beach is one of those places, there's a lot of yellows coming off yellows. Cold tires, doesn't take much for these cars to get away from you. I think Moreno was completely unsighted, as my colleague David Hobbs would say. Could not see around the cars ahead of him to see Levine there in the tire walls with the back end of the car sticking out onto the racing line, and he clipped him. Meanwhile, in front of us, a couple guys came in. Tagliani's in. Going to try to keep him topped up. Darren Manning in and out. Looks like Ryan no, Hunter Ray no, 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 in and out. No, 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 no. Good job. Good job. Come on, I think if I was Ray Hall, I think I might have had Michelle come in. In fact, I think that would have been a good gamble for the end. Yeah, I like that a lot. Uh, now 
let's take a look while we're away. This is a replay of the restart. We'll try to take you up to the accident. Jordan, third car in line is Levine, who is out of sequence now and running. Laps the down. The front. Good launch by Jordan. Tracy behind him. Down to one clean. Sebastian Bourdais thought about it, but did not go down the inside of the Mexican. And Jukera thought about it from the outside of his teammate. Around the fountain. Okay, the next big right-hander coming up. There's Levine. Ooh. Bruno avoids him. Ah, and there's Moreno getting into the back of the car. Levine is just over his head. I'm sorry. He was out of control four or five turns before angles. that. There's Levine, left to right across your picture, into the tire wall. Watch for Moreno right there. Bang. Looks like Manning may have caught a little bit of that as well. Not sure if he just swerved out of the way or if he may have got caught by something. A little further away. Way offline, Moreno gets into him. Well, I'm surprised nobody got into Moreno. That's about it. Everybody else got away clean. His teammate Dominguez barely got out. Look at the green flag is still waving in that corner. Hello? They're saying after the incident. Oh, okay. So we are back under full course caution for the third time today. Incidentally, our safety car is being driven by Allison Altsman from Stevenson Ranch, California. Today is her birthday. So happy birthday, Allison. She's doing the driving, signaling the cars behind is Patty Mayer. Let's get down to the pit lane and Derek Daly. Todd, if I could just have a word with you just for a second, running the Higanti car, the engineer for Jourdain. The question is, why did you not bring Michelle in under that yellow? Well, on the lap 34 yellow, I think it was pretty obvious that we didn't want to come in because we have a really fast car and we could pull a gap on those guys. We didn't want to limit us. This yellow hurt. But obviously, we'd made our bet already by not pitting on 34. Um, if we would have come in on the lap 36 yellow, we'd have definitely lost positions to everybody who had pitted before us. So we were immediately P7. I think with this strategy, we can do better than that. OK, interesting. Thank you, Todd. So he is counting on another yellow, I'm guessing. Actually, that's a, that's a good gamble. As he said, once, he, once they made that decision, now they've made their bet. They have to play that out. And that's, what, that's where Bourdais they, they did this in Mexico, then they second-guessed themselves and brought them in again. If they had stayed out, they have a chance. The more cars that stay out, the more the guys that are on that 34 strategy get held up. And so these guys out front need to really put the pedal down. Now, Jordan's the only guy, he has the advantage over Paul. Paul's the guy that's really kind of caught in the middle because he can't go as far as Jordan can, but he's also has these guys behind him that have made only have to make one fewer stop. So Carpentier is looking pretty good right now. Saw the Corona car. There's that car owner, Derek Walker, Calvin Fish. We're down here with Derek. Derek, unfortunate situation for Rodolfo. When the tires are cold and these street circuits, really a nightmare for these rookies. Yeah, it's pretty tough on the first few laps, pretty hairy. But, uh, you know, it's all part of the learning experience. So we'll come back another day with him. Talk about Darren's day. He nearly got wrapped up in that one as well, but he just missed him and you brought him in, just working the strategy here, trying to extend the window again. Yeah, it was a pretty close call. Um, thought we were going to collect both of our cars back there, but it was good that we missed it, and we thought we'd take advantage. I made a pretty late call, but um, I, I don't want to see a replay on that, by the way, but my guys saved me, so we got them back out, and we're running fine. Even the boys on their toes. What they've done with the rain out this weekend has actually gone to a stiffer package. They typically have to lift the car up off the deck here with the bumps around this street circuit. It loses a lot of downforce on the rain out. So they've been working very hard at a stiffer spring package, allowing the car still to have low ride height and essentially more aerodynamic grip, Scott. It's, it's still a struggle. I mean, when you're looking at a giveaway of downforce and you're talking four or 500 pounds, I don't care what you do, you, you, you ain't going to get it done. Here's a look at the pit situation. Those cars that pitted on lap 37, the most recent round of stops, Bourdais, Tagliani, Ryan hunter Ray, Mario Haberfeld, and Darren Manning. We're working lap number 40. 
We'll take a break and return with more live coverage of round three of the Bridgestone Presents the Champ Car World Series powered by Ford from Long Beach. No doubt about it, the Bridgestone potential radials used in the Champ Car Series take a tremendous pounding around a street circuit like the one we have here at Long Beach. Got now four. with no traction control, these guys are forced to control these cars. Look at Sebastian hanging that sucker up. Paul Tracy going on to the back straight. They're talking a lot of issues getting off the hairpin, spinning those tires. Tagliani coming off the hairpin, very tight, very slow, spin them right up. From 30 mile an hour corners to 185 mile an hour straightaways. Let's get down to the pit lane. Derek Daly and Al Spire. From Bridgestone Tires, Al, as you watch the big screen here, is it fair to say that on, on a street circuit like that, is this quite a brace that these tires, your Bridgestone tires, can, take quite a pounding? Well, yeah, I mean, these tires take a pretty big pounding here, and they've got 750 horsepower. They mesh your foot down on that accelerator. They can spin them, but, you know, this is our softest street course tire. It's holding up quite well. And, you know, when they come in for a pit stop, they not only put on a new set of tires, they also put in a couple hundred pounds of fuel, and both of that means they have to adjust, and the veterans normally deal with it pretty well. But, you know, it's a challenge for us, but we don't have the marbles that we used to have, and overall, we're quite pleased with how everything's going. Good point, and of course, as they do take these poundings, remember the engineers learn something, the more they pound them on the racetrack. All right, thanks very much, Derek. You saw Oriol Servia go around Patrick Carpentier for fourth. And that very well, if this strategy that they're on turns out to be the one, that will be the pass that wins Oriol Servia his first race. If, if these guys out front are not able to build enough of a gap to make up for that extra stop, so that will prove to be an absolutely pivotal move for Servia. See if we get another look at it as we go down into turn one. This is going to be a great shot about from here to zero, zero to hero. Last week they in Mexico a couple weeks ago made the wrong call. Here you go, off the green. Serbia jumping out to the inside. Look at that car Ooh, wedge. Cold boy, tires. Boy. Oh, smooth move up the inside. Now, right before that first yellow, uh, Jordan did a little bit of a block on Tracy right before the yellow came out. Paul complained. The message was delivered to Jordan to watch for blocking. I asked for some clarification if it was an official warning. They said, I am just when you think you've seen it all, I mean, I, I'm not quite sure if Nifel really wants to stop blocking. If he doesn't, great. Just carve him up, let the guys do what they want. But if they do, he needs to grow himself a set of balls or it's going to just keep getting worse. A warning for a warning. Serbia and Vision car making some good moves up here. We we're just talking a little bit. They made some bad calls in Mexico. Jimmy McGee, Pat Patrick, and the guys, maybe they can turn things around here for today. But I think this is going to be, as you were saying as well, Tommy, I think this is going to be a smart move for the end of this race. Seventh driver for Patrick Racing since 1999. Let's go to Derek Daly. With Jim McGee here. Jim, we're at an amusing time of the uh, race here. This call you made for Serbia makes you look like a bit of a genius right now. Well, you know how it is. Chicken one week, feathers the next. So, you know, uh, Oreo's doing a good job, and the Vistion car is running good. And, you know, this pit strategy now with the rules we got, I think it's all going to go away after this race. It's kind of tough. You know, you kind of get caught in the middle. You you know, like you say, you can be uh, a hero or a zero, and uh, it just depends on the luck of the draw. Well, right now, you could well look like a hero. Thanks, Jim. Zero to zero, zero to hero. Been in that seat a couple times. And just kind of reset it for you. We have three different strategies going here. We've got, well, very two but variations on the second. The guys up front have made their bed. They're going to try to sleep on These guys up need to build up a gap because they have to make one more stop than everybody that's from fourth on back. But now, Oreo and Carpentier stopped on 34. It's not a foregone conclusion that everybody can go the full 28 laps. If those guys can't do the full 28 because of fuel, the next guy's in line. It becomes Adrian Fernandez. He stopped one lap later, I'm guessing, for that reason. So you've got Jordan and Tracy and Jim Cara who need to really make time. Serbia, Carpentier, and Dominguez who need to save some fuel. And Fernandez who needs to apply pressure from the back with a little more fuel in the tank. Now we saw from the first time, from the first set of pit stops, these guys didn't, I mean, the only guy running up front who didn't make it to 28, besides Tagliani who's having a pickup problem, was Tracy. As far as Jordan, as far as Zucara, Serbia, they all made it to 28, as well as Carpentier. So these guys, we know, at least, 
previous to this can't make that full 28 lap distance. That's what they have to do. And the laps of yellow we've had will help. There was no yellow during that first 28. We're at the halfway point of the race. Lap 45 is behind us, working 46. And once again, Jordan and Tracy are drawing away from the rest. Sixth place, Mario Dominguez having a good strong run. These guys have turned around. Mario has done a terrific job this season. Last year, you were just trying to miss him. This year, he's he's right in the middle of the hunt. And, I mean, I, you got to give hats off to Herdez for sticking with their program. If you would, if I would have been running that team, I would have said, I have seen nothing here. I would have shown him the door. But the response over the offseason has been nothing short of amazing. He lucked into the win last year, but he has been on the pace this year. Here Jimmy comes Vassar. Jimmy Vassar looking for seventh place. He's making the move. Down into one. Alongside, yes, Trying he to make is. it stick on the outside. Oh, oh. oh. Buffalo boy, round the outside. Oh. And here comes Jokera. Oh. oh, Dominguez lost some momentum. That's Bourdais that wants a way around. Big move down in turn one. Jimmy Vassar, Captain America, Peter Fonda, easy rider. <laughs> Got an easy rider uh, Captain America helmet in the works, from what I've been told. Roy Lee, who does uh, Jimmy's helmets, is taking a look at, at doing a special edition helmet. Let's look at our race summary. The leader is Michelle Jordan. He has led 19 laps. That's the most he has led in any race in his career. Now 123 starts and counting. He has shared the lead with Paul Tracy. And we have had three full course cautions for a total of nine of the 46 laps complete. Let's look at the cars out of the race. Alex Young. Rodolfo Levine and Roberto Moreno, who got into the back of Levine's car that stuck in the tire walls at turn five. And let's kick it back to strategy for an instant. Michelle Jordan went one lap longer. He went to 28, the full distance. Now he stretches his to 56. That's when he has to come in. Conversely to that, Paul might have to come in two laps early. One for sure, because he pitted on 27. The other fact, can he go 28 laps? on his field mileage. He needs to stretch his field mileage to be able to do full 28 laps. Right now, I think Jordan is pushing him to run this car pretty fast. He does not want Jordan to stretch it out. On board with Paul Tracy, that construction on the left is the new Pike at Rainbow Harbor, a massive project that will once again alter the skyline here in Long Beach, California, powered mainly by this race. On board with Paul Tracy, running in second place. Roberto Moreno is out of the race, and he's with Calvin Fish. Well, he came in here fourth in points, Bob. Disappointing day, Roberto. But what actually happened there as that scene played out? Um, it was just a blind spot for me there. Um, I was really good. Uh, my car is really good this weekend. Uh, I was having a good go in the guy in front of me, so I was ready to uh, come out of that corner and uh, give, it, give it a go in the next corner. And uh, when I saw Rodolfo, was too late. Um, I was complete blinded. Um, it's one of those things, but I'm very happy for the head edge competition team because we made a big progress this weekend here and uh, we're on the, on the learning curve growing every, every race. So uh, there will be many good races for us to come. All right, mate, good luck. He's new super sub no longer, Bob. He's back here full time. He's looking for another win. Super sub, Pupo, the stealth man who's climbed to fourth in the championship. Championship is going to take a hit today, but Roberto Moreno is always great fun to have around on a race weekend. There's the leader, Michelle Jordan Jr. He's putting up and laying him down. He is rocking about three tenths quicker. That lap before the last couple few, he's running two to three tenths quicker. It's always difficult for the guy running in second to run quite as fast as the leader, a little bit more turbulence, but we're seeing Michelle just doing a terrific job. Now has a gap. Last time by start finish, 1.6 seconds over Paul Tracy. This is going to be an interesting test of what the newfound maturity of Paul Tracy. When things aren't quite going your way, they didn't have the mileage. That penalizes Paul. And so now if he can say, you know what, I'm going to give it everything I have, but I will settle for second if I have to. That is going to be a key thing to watch. Looks like he pulled a tear off off his visor. Pulled a tear off off. Jimmy Bass are having another very strong run today, currently running seven. These guys came in this race Three cars for the two drivers. Won this race in 1996, driving car number 12. He's back in car number 12 for Stefan Johansson's American Spirit Racing Team. And 
This is his 12th start in the Toyota Grand Prix of Long Beach. So if you're into numerology, you're all set. And we got a viewer email from Michael Hart who says, I'm a Vassar fan. Is Hot Sauce on site? You know, we call Hot Sauce is Jimmy Vassar's friend, and he was at Fontana last year. It's the only race he came to. It's the only race Jimmy won. And so I told Ray Hall at Vancouver, you need to get Hot Sauce to the races. He finally made it to Vancouver, but, or to Fontana. From what I understand, I have not seen Hot Sauce this weekend. But so that might be the key factor. If Hot Sauce is in the house, Jimmy might be able to uh, pull one up, put it on the podium. And all of Jimmy's experience here is really helping him in this race. He's kind of knowing what to expect right now, and he's just slowly carving his way up through the field. He's also on the same strategy as Serbia and Carpentier. What a race that was at Fontana. Jimmy Vassar won the fastest 500 mile race of all time, averaging over 197 miles an hour. We'll be back. Welcome back to Long Beach. Later tonight at 9 p.m. Eastern Time specifically, catch all the action of the Trans Am race from here at the Toyota Grand Prix of Long Beach featuring our own Scott Pruitt. A winner back in 1987 on these streets in a Trans Am car for NASCAR owner Jack Roush. He'll lead the field to the green for the Trans Am race of 2003. See it tonight here on Speed Channel at 9 Eastern. Talk about running out of gas in 1988. Qualified first, led every lap except either the last one or the one lap to go. Otherwise, I would have won that race as well. In fact, Scott will have to leave us before our broadcast is over to go hop into his Jaguar and get ready for that Trans Am race. The gap from race leader Michelle Jordan Jr. to Paul Tracy now 2.18 seconds as the Mexican driver continues to draw away. Behind Tracy at Junquera, Serbia, Carpentier, and Adrian Fernandez right there at the end of that train of cars. A big key to this right now is the difference between Michelle Jourdain and Tracy is two. Back to Junquera, five seconds, and then a huge step back, 17 seconds to Serbia. Michelle, Tracy, Junquera, these guys are trying to stretch it out so when they make their pit stops, they won't come out in the middle of, of these other guys are running a different strategy. Now, Jordan has things pretty under control on this strategy. We're going to monitor how much they're pulling out. They're 16.9 ahead of Serbia right now. Whether that's going to be enough to overcome that extra stop, we'll see. But the, the, what I'm watching right now is Paul Tracy versus Bruno Junquera. Bruno can go one lap longer. He's about four seconds behind Paul right now. But Paul's going to be on cold tires while Bruno's on hot ones. So I'm going to be really anxious to see when Junquera comes out after his stop if Paul is in front or can get by him before Bruno gets his tires up to temperature. And then we're gonna see what happens between this group. This is effectively the battle for the win if those front guys don't pull out enough distance. So Carpentier is trying to stay close, Fernandez is trying to stay close, and Fernandez can go one lap longer than these two guys before he stops. So we got a bunch of different plots and subplots playing out. The Eight. first one is Tracy Junquera. And that's coming up within a lap. Tracy will be the first to stop, then Junquera and Jourdain. On board with Tracy. Into the pits he goes. Calvin Fish is waiting for him. And the driver, this feels like forever in his pit lane. Just spoke to the crew, Scott, and they said that he should be no problem on fuel. That first stint is very difficult with the warm-up laps to get that 28-lap spread that they needed. They said we've got help here on the caution, on the second stint, the third stint, we should be okay. No changes once again. Another great start for the players, team. Slight delay there for Paul, just getting him back up to speed, but a good start nonetheless. Good quick stop. Now they have to run the speed all the way down to pit out. Painful. <laughs> Watch for him to pop the visor down, then you know he's ready for battle. Off we go. Lock up the rears a little bit there. Looks like he's going to leave it open to crack. This is critical, getting a fast lap on these cold tires. He's taking a lot of chances here. You see, car sliding out a little bit. Wants to get away from him. you got to push as hard as you can. See, wow. oversteer right there. That's this is money than money. But he knows stop was over a second quicker than his previous stop. Jordan is now in the pit lane, and there comes Junquera behind him. Once again, the prize-winning Ray Hall crew will go to work. 
Todd Boland, the engineer for the Higanti team, just told me there are no changes. This is car is as good as it gets. It is a flat out sprint from here if they don't get a yellow. This will be the fight right here, Junkara and Tracy. I'm pretty sure Junkara is going to be right about, it be interesting to see where he comes out. Jun Tracy will probably be behind Junkara, but he's going to be coming like a freight train. Notice he picked the very last pit, so he'd have a clear shot on the exit. Tracy just flashed by us. Junkara's down at the exit. Good out lap. Tracy on the left, Junkara on the right. Now Paul has to capitalize to get in front of Junkara before he gets these tires up. There's Junkara right in front of him. It's Thiago Montero, the young Portuguese for Fittipaldi Damon Racing behind. But this is all about Tracy. Oh, is he going to force the issue? He's going to get him. Yep. Oh, yeah. Ooh, he's, oh. He had to be aggressive. He's on hot tires. Shakira on cold tires. If you don't make it happen within those first four or five turns, you're not going to get it done. Whoa, there goes Montero as well. What a move by the rookie. Montero is a lap down. That was not a move for position for Montero around Junquera. Meanwhile, Serbia takes the lead with Carpentier, Fernandez, and Vassar. And that is the battle you're looking at now. The orange and white of the Vistion car for Patrick Racing and Carpentier, the other player's car, all over him. Fernandez watching and Jimmy Vassar behind. Now to show you, Bruno was four seconds behind Paul, but he was able to run the one lap longer. Look where Adrian Fernandez is, and he's going to be able to run one lap longer. So more and more, it's looking like Adrian is in the catbird seat. So when these guys stop in a few laps, Adrian's going to run, try to run as fast as lap of the race on that lap, and we're going to have the same situation when, when he comes out of the pits on cold tires trying to defend the guys behind him. Adrian has had a real spring in his step this weekend. His team went to the new Arizona Motorsports Park near Phoenix last week, did a lot of testing, and he came away absolutely buoyant. He went up the road to Torrance, California, to the Cosworth factory to tell the boys how much he appreciates their efforts. He turned his fastest lap of that test on an engine with 1,200 miles on it. Let's get more on Adrian with Calvin. Just checked in with Patrick Carpentier's team. They said Adrian is in the catbird seat, as you said, Bob, right now. They said he can run some extra laps. Serbia and I have to pit on the same lap. So Adrian Fernandez, when this thing shakes around, if all three of those guys only need one more stop, he could be the leader. Now that's assuming equal pit stops. It's going to come down on the crew guy's shoulders. If Adrian's guys can get a comparable stop to these two guys in front of him, he should be in front. There is Jordan. Michelle is going to have to work his way up to the field. Currently, he's in 11th because of how the pit stops. The more clear running he gets, looks like he's running clear by himself. He's got to make that time. Got to be putting down those laps. I'm trying to calculate exactly how much he was uh, 18.4 seconds in front of Serbia before he stopped. Based, my best guess is he's going to need 40 seconds to compensate to, on the, during these next th few stints cumulatively to have a chance to overcome that stop. Down Jordan. seaside way. And behind him, Paul Tracy in the player's car. Look at that gap. That's just, that gap purely is from st extending it one lap. Getting the heat put on Oriole. Serbia and Carpentier. Getting it on. Orioles defending the inside down there. Defending the inside is okay, where you might get in trouble with the stewards if you're in the inside and then you start to squeeze to the outside when the guy starts to look up the outside. That's where, in my mind, it becomes blocking. Carpentier is quick through that section from one to five. Oriole and Vistion. Lola had a real strong run going. Unfortunately, had a bad call down in Monterey, Mexico, getting things turned around here. This could be, as, as McGee said, zero to hero, hero to zero. Doesn't that, take much. How do you say one week is chicken and eggs and feathers? <laughs> chicken <huh>? feathers. <laughs> now there's Fernandez. The two cars ahead of him and the two behind him will pit within the next three laps. He can go a lap beyond. It's turned out to be a great race. These guys are, this is all for position here. Vassar, right behind Fernandez. Is that pit one? 
Did it one lap. One more lap for Serbia. That sounded like the key. First race lead for the young Spaniard since the Super Speedway at Fontana, the California Speedway, back in November of 2001. That's even worse news for Serbia because according to the scoring monitor, he can go two more laps. So by pitting a lap early, it just compounds that deficit. What he's saying is pit one, pit one more lap, and then he should say pit, pit, pit. Okay. If that's if that's what Patrick has gone with in the past. Thanks for the, being the interpreter. Jimmy, the interpreter. interpreter appreciate interpreter that. There. It's been a few years with Patrick Racing. After the front five cars have pitted within the next three laps, then the next five will pit as one. Those being Dominguez, Bordet, Tagliani, Haberfeld, and Ryan hunter Ray. We take a look at that top seven. There's only five seconds, five and a half seconds from first yeah, to seventh oh, place. In, in. Yeah, there you go, in, in, in. Coming, coming in. And just when we're saying that Jordani is not gonna be able to overcome this deficit, taking Hugh and Tracy both, taking huge chunks out of the lead that Serbia has. He needs to, again, cumulatively build, put 40 seconds on these guys. Yellows kill Jordan and Tracy at this point. But those guys are running in the nines, these guys are running in the 11s. We have a nail biter on our hands here, folks. Uh -oh. <laughs> Expect four cars in the pit lane. Jimmy Vassar's boys are in the pits right across from our announce position. Serbia, Carpentier, Vassar, and Dominguez. This lap, in the pits, this lap, in four. All right, let's just let this play out. Calvin Fish awaits Patrick Carpentier. Derek Daly will be watching Oriole Serbia's crew at work. Here they come. Fifth lap, Dominguez is set up. You're gonna to have to come around him. Patrick hits pit lane. He's got to move around the herd as crew and get in position. I think the key here is good, clean stop, obviously, but he does not have new Bridgestones to put on. There's a pretty well-worn set he's going train. with, so these have some miles on them. Three. Maybe that'll give the edge to Serbia. Let's go down to Derek Daly with Serbia. Calvin, Serbia is the same. It is scrub tires for him. No new tires. We're watching him on the side. There goes Serbia well ahead of Carpentier. We don't even see him up the pit lane. He Carpentier stole it, Derek. He lost fire. He tried to move with a few holes still connected. They had to get the starter out there. That was a critical mistake by Patrick. He tried to move before the fuel hose was un unhooked, and he stole the engine. Meanwhile, Jimmy Vassar looked to get a good stop. Alex Tagliani pitted. You can't make, as a as driver, the pressure's on. You can't make those type of mistakes. Extremely costly. Now, while those guys were pitting, these two guys were trying to put in their demon lap. So we're gonna watch where Fernando, when Fernandez comes out after the stop this lap, where, well, Patrick will be back. Where is Serbia? Now here's Jordan. This is gonna impede his progress. He was taking huge chunks out of the lead uh, that he needed to of Serbia and Carpentier and Fernandez, but now that his progress is impeded by these guys. There's Adrian Fernandez in his pit, pitting from second place. Oh, would you be tempted to pit a lap or two early if you're being held up? Jordan's got to make the move on these guys, but because if he doesn't, he's going to have PT all in his mirrors. It's Mario Haberfeld ahead of him. And he got around Haberfeld. Tracy does likewise. When you're cutting your way through traffic, like these guys are doing right now, for Jordan, he knows Tracy's good for carving his way through. He has to do the same thing. He's got to be forced to make some of those moves, even though when they might be a little bit dicey. It's always harder when you're the first guy to get the first car through traffic. Once the first car comes through, they expect the other ones to be coming. Next cars doing the pits will be Sebastian Bourdais, Ryan hunter Ray, Mario Haberfeld, and Darren Manning. Meanwhile, Joel Camatias has pitted the Lugano car. And 
Fernandez was able to get by, guys. He was able to come out two spots in front of Serbia. So that fast lap coming in has put Fernandez in the catbird seat. Relic, and then it's contingent upon how quickly Jordan and Tracy can cut their way through traffic. So of the guys that are on the strategy that can go on one more stop, Fernandez leads Serbia. Here's Fernandez, here's Serbia. And you gotta look at the left-hand box there, Jordan and Tracy. This forces the hand of Jordan and Tracy where they gotta keep putting those laps together. That's Garrett Manning headed for the pit lane. Ryan Hunter Ray is already there. Sebastian Bourdain. Good service. Four tires, full load of fuel. No more stops for the Frenchman. Oh. Boy, that was close. In the pit lane, Ryan Hunter Ray. Got very, very close. Wheel to wheel with Darren Manning on his way out, and they stayed that way. Look at those two. They went down the pit lane that way. All right, Hunter Ray takes the position as they continue on their way out. There's Alex oh. Tagliani down the inside. Oh, my. Now Manning immediately on the attack. Carpentier right on the back of him. He's got to get by these guys in quick time. Gets by Manning. See if he can get Ryan Hunter Ray. He should get him up going to the next turn. Let's He's see. on one tires. Carpentier looks down the inside, pulls alongside, and gets around him. Let's get to the pit lane where Calvin Fish is standing by with Hunter Ray's team owner. Stefan here. That was fun, man. Bit of chicken going on down pit lane there with your new rookie. Yeah, it's nerve wracking. He did a good job there. We were telling him on the radio to try to, you know, just hold his, hold his position and, and, you know, don't give him any room. And he did a great job there. How much do you have to talk him through these first couple of laps? It seemed like guys are making mistakes on cold tires till the pressure's come up. Yeah, uh, you know, there's not a lot you can say. He's just going to have to be out there and feel his way around, you know, but he's doing a great job so far. All right, great performance by the team. Well done, mate. Jimmy Vassar, big move up the inside on Bourdais. What happened to Bourdais? He lost all sorts of He was of still on there. cold tires. Wow. Didn't want to take too big a chance going into one. Meanwhile, Jimmy just sucks him right in, goes straight up the inside. Nice move. Captain America against the very, Frenchman. Very cool. Oh, my. A little political theme as we head for the break. Michelle Jardine shown on the lead, and there's that man, PT, just behind. We'll be back. Back in 1978, what would become the Kart Champ Car Series visited Brands Hatch in England. A.J. Foy, Danny on the gas, Ungayas, and all the rest flashing around Paddock Bend on the so-called indie circuit. Tight, narrow, and short. Johnny Rutherford finished third, Rick Mears in first, and Tom Sneva in second. Well, the Champ Cars are back in jolly old, and we'll have it for you. And then the following week, it'll be on to the race known as the American Memorial 500, following the tragic events of September 11, 2001. But they will be back for the German 500 at the Euro Speedway Lausitz. It will be absolutely spectacular. Now, here are the coverage plans for Brands Hatch on CBS Sports. We'll have a one-hour preview Sunday, May 4th, at noon Eastern time. The race itself will air Saturday, May 10th, the following Saturday at 1 p.m. Eastern Time on CBS. Then the German 500 from the Euro Speedway Lausitz qualifying Saturday, May 10th here on Speed at 4 p.m. Eastern Time following the broadcast of the Brands Hatch Race on CBS. And then on Sunday, May 11th, the German 500 at 1 p.m. Eastern on CBS. So join us for a big weekend of champ car racing from Europe on the second weekend of May. Now we need to do a little bit of a reset here. Michelle Jourdain, Tracy, and Junquera all have to make one more stop. Uh, uh, Jourdain needs to stretch that out. We're about 35 to 40 seconds to be comfortable because Fernandez, Oriol, Vassar, they're done. They do not have to come back in. 
the caveat to that, if a yellow comes out, game's over. I think, based on the last round of stops, I think Jordan needs 40 seconds to stop and get back up to speed. He needs about 36 seconds to stop and be out in front and then try to hold off uh, Fernandez on hot tires. So uh, we're watching it right now. It's about 30.3, but Jordan ran a 9.109.7. Fernandez ran a 1.10.6, so that's close to a second. Very, very close whether he can pull out that gap. In other words, we have 20 laps to go, and our story is just beginning. Don't go away. Michelle Jordan leads. We'll be back. Welcome back live to the streets of Long Beach, California. Never mind the race. Through that hole in the fence is the smoking Lola Ford of Sebastian Bourdais, who was running very, very well when the engine suddenly let go on the front straightaway. The question is, did he lay down oil? They quickly got the car behind the wall under a local yellow. We are still under green. Michelle Jardine leads Paul Tracy by 2.1 seconds. Dodge big bullets. Michelle, Tracy, and Junker all dodged a bullet. They did not throw the yellow. Good thing for them. Let's take another look at what happened. Out of the corner, problems already. Problem goes away. To the inside. Smokey. That's Dominguez just behind him. Oops. A lot of rubber build up there on the lee side of the racetrack. They see fire at the back of the car. No sign of uh, of oil though on the uh, the camera lens. It's hard to say if that's a turbo or if that's an engine. It can, sometimes that can go either way. Look at all that here. rubber build up on the tires. Yeah. A lot of marbles off the racing line at this late point of the race. Well, it might not have been engine related. But Michelle, Tracy, and Shakira dodged a huge bullet purely from the fact that a full yellow didn't come back out. And they have stretched their lead now to about 32. 32.2 seconds. 32.2. If Michel Jourdain wants to win his first career champ car race, he's going to have to string together 11 of the best laps of his life, 11 laps till his stop. If he can get that gap up to 36 seconds, last lap he was about only two tenths quicker than Fernandez. He varies between seven to two tenths quicker. If he can build that gap, he's got a shot to try to hold Fernandez off on cold tires. But when he comes in, there'll be six laps to go. A lot of fuel calculations going on. How long do we need to leave that nozzle connected to the car at the flow rate that these cars use? The limit will be changing the tires because to satisfy the stop, I, I would imagine they'll plug the probe in for a second, and as soon as the tires are done, so this is a point where the Ray Hall team can really earn their keep. Fernandez had to stay connected for the full load. These guys could do it when they go on the tires. To Calvin Fish. I just checked with Tracy's team. They believe they have enough of a gap to stay out in front of Adrian Fernandez. You're right on the money, boys, in terms of it'll be tires, a splash of fuel, and send him out. And that was the key. Be a short, quick stop. They think 30 seconds plus is enough. There you go. So my, my 40 seconds and the 36 on cold tires was not factoring in a short fill. So they might be in that window now. It's all going to play out when Jordan exits the pits after his stop. Well, the title contenders set up for that dramatic final stop. There is one of the front running cars that may have a problem, Derek Daly. Don't know whether it's a problem, but on the last stop for Servia, the Vistion Patrick team did not fill the fuel tank up. When Jim McGee found that out, his eyes came out on stocks, but one of their engineers, John Hennick, assured him, or tried to convince him, that they did get enough in to finish the race. I ran down to Dave Watson, engineer for Fernandez. I said, do you have enough fuel? In his perfect English accent, he said, not one of my immediate problems. <laughs> Galvin? <laughs> well, Brent Moore is the PR guy for Team Rail. has been running up and down pit lane, passing pieces to paper to some of these lap cars, trying to get Michelle Jourdain clear racetrack. So he's working his backside off back here, guys, just trying to give Michelle some space on the racetrack. I don't imagine he'll have much trouble. There is probably not a guy in the paddock who is better liked than Michelle Jourdain. Last lap by, he ran a 10. Oh, excuse me, a 9-3 in comparison to a 9, about a 10 flat, so, so about 7 tenths that last lap. Now, he has about seven, six or seven laps to try and rip off his, about another about another five or six seconds for it to be close to continue to hold that lead. Poor kid runs a 9-3, and the team says, can't you go any faster than that on the radio? <laughs> 
A what beautiful, a beautiful drive thus far by Jordan. It was their call that put him in this position. He had this race under control. Had they stopped under that yellow, he wouldn't be in this spot, but he might be able to pull his team out of the muck. Well, no matter what happens, thus far he has led 39 laps in today's race. His total laps led in seven seasons in the series before this race, 35. Off the hairpin, hard on the gas. The call that Jourdain made is the exact call that Newman Haas made in the first race and made by accident in the second race when the radio didn't break. Now he has done just what you have to do to try to overcome that. Derek Daly has more. Just spoke to Todd Boland, Jourdain's engineer. They said, we need to do a Michael Schumacher. They asked him, can you go faster? He said, yes. They said, then go, because the gap they need is 39 to 40 seconds. That's the magic gap. Right now, he's at about 33 seconds, and he has eight more laps to try to get that extra six or seven his crew thinks he needs. What a thing to be able to come to the pits and say, there you are, boys, now it's your job. Let's win this thing. Looking down live on what could be the biggest day of 26-year-old Michelle Jourdain Jr.'s career, in fact, his life, because all he's ever wanted to be was a racing driver, like his father, Michelle Sr., and his uncle, Bernard Jourdain, who both drove champ cars. Right now, his gap over Paul Tracy is 2.3 seconds, but you heard us say earlier, the team asked him if he could squeeze a little more out of that Higante Lola Ford. He said yes. Last time by, he did a 109.0, and he is now a full 35 seconds ahead of the fourth place car of Adrian Fernandez, which is his immediate concern right now. More immediate concern is Mario Haberfeld. I'm sure they went down to Eric Bachelard and said, can you give us some help? Waving his hands. Let him by. Mario Haberfeld's team have just come down to Ray Hall and said as soon as he gets behind him, he's going to move over and let him go. Well, he's behind him right now as they turn through the hairpin and onto the front straight. Haberfeld should just... Oh, somebody just ducked into pit lane. And That's like Bruno Junquera. Junquera's in. An approach to your box. Fernandez, uh, Jordan, take a look up the inside. It's going to be very quick, very quick. If you're put on the brake, revs up. This will give us a clue how long Jordan's stop might be. It's only going to be on the tires. Okay, get ready. Go, 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 go. 9.4, wow. so a, a good two seconds quicker than a full fuel stop. Do you notice what the guy at the back did? He hoisted himself on the rear wing as the car be able to, began to move away. He wasn't pushing, he was riding the back of that car to give him a little extra grip. Now we're looking at that, that lead that Michelle has over Fernandez. Almost 38 seconds now, so now he's getting that magic window. The Cotty team needs to be telling Fernandez, man, you got to start ripping them off because he's getting right there where you're not going to be able to pull this thing off. I think I think Jordan has pulled back enough time. If, if Ray Hall rips off a great stop and he's able to keep it gathered up on the cold tires, this party will go on for two days. Michelle Jordan, when they finish on the podium, they have a big time. If he wins this race for his first race, it will be a very, very popular win for Michel Jourdain. Regardless of how it turns out, he's you're turned in a You're in P3 and the two cars in front of North They need to also tell him to go like Stink because they've built enough of a gap to maybe stop and get out in front of you. But anyways, Jourdain knows before he started this race today, he didn't know in his mind that he could race the master, Paul Tracy, head to head and come out on top. He has done that today, helped by the fact that Paul couldn't go the full 20 out of the first in, but that's a big boost for Michelle Michelle's O'Day. Talking about Michelle, spent a lot of years racing with him, and he's come a long way. Talking to him, you know, he felt like he was beat up quite a bit by the team before he came to Ray Hall. Once he got to Ray Hall, had a mentor like Jimmy Vassar really start showing him ropes. It was like a new guy. All of a sudden, this guy was just running beautiful races, couldn't get the qualifying done. Now he's got the qualifying done. Two seconds the first race. Lead 
good way to, to end it with a win here in Long Beach. Now you and I, we got our confidence by winning in junior formula. Jordan was racing a champ car at age 18, and he wasn't particularly fast. He has matured in front of our eyes, and so that might have happened to you in the Trans Am days, what have you. Jordan, it's happening right now. He will be a different driver from this point forward. Who are the drivers who took their first career champ car victories here on the streets of Long Beach? Michael Andretti in 1986, Paul Tracy in 1993, and Juan Montoya in 1999. Pretty good cast there, huh? I would say so. Now we're gonna get a sneak preview because Paul Tracy's coming in a lap before Jordan, where he comes out relevant to Fernandez. 2.7 behind Jordan right now, but where Paul comes out relative to Fernandez, and if that impedes Fernandez at all, because Paul's on cold tires, we've got a kind of mixture with three different components in it here. If a yellow doesn't come out. If, oh yeah. Well. If a yellow comes out now, he's got to come into the pits. If he sees a yellow, he's got to yank that thing in immediately to try and pull this deal if off. Yellow comes. Paul Tracy is in the pit lane. Calvin Fish is waiting for him. I think they're just rolling the dice here. They need to get Paul in with a good clean stop and then have hot tires and hope he can be somewhere over that gearbox of Michelle Jourdain. He'll have a minimal time to get his tires up to temperature. So we're looking at another good set of Bridgestone tires here. Paul had four decent sets. Fuel is in. He's underway. He's take a chance to grab the drink bottle, some refreshment. A good stop for the players, boys. 7.2 seconds. <laughs> tires and just enough fuel to go to the distance. Now, where's Fernandez? Fernandez. Here he comes, coming just by coming start by us right now. Right now. I'd say Jordan's looking pretty good. There's PT on his way out. Here comes Work Fernandez. Work on Tracy, work on Tracy. He's on cold tires up in front there. He's got another car in between. That's Patrick Lamarier in the Scientific Atlantic car from PK Racing. As long as Lamarier didn't get too anxious to try and get by Paul on cold tires. Jordan is in the pit lane. It's up to the Ray Hall crew now. Here's Derek Daly. The gap is more than 40 seconds. They believe they have enough of a gap to do this stop and get out and maintain the lead. This is the best crew in champ car racing going to work right now. Great stop. Oh, 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 we can't get it to gear. We can't get it to gear. The crowd comes to its feet. Paul comes, Tracy. Paul Tracy and Adrian Fernandez. This is for the win. Oh, look, Jordan is completely stationary. P2, P2. Oh, no. If Fernandez is going to have any chance at Paul, it's got to happen this lap. I don't think he's got, I think Paul's got enough heat in the tires now. It's not going to happen. Ah, what a heartbreaker. Look at Jordan, oh. head in his hands. Well, turn the page, here we are. Paul Tracy looking for that third victory, and Adrian Fernandez with a long drought of his own, hoping to pick up a win which would be his first as an owner driver. I'm stunned. <laughs> How times can change. I'm standing here with Bobby Rahal. Bobby, the emotional roller coaster, you've seen it many times in racing, but this is a stunning defeat from something that was so good for so long. Yeah, it's gonna be hard to take. Uh, he did a beautiful job and, you know, we, uh, he did what he had to do. You know, we would have beaten them both out pretty easily. And Bobby, do you know what happened? Do you know what broke? Sounds like he can't get it in gear for some reason. That's the way it goes. Now let's check the reaction. There's car owner Jerry Forsyth and his crew pull it for Paul Tracy. For players in this team, this is a huge year. Maybe the last year for players in this. We have tears. We have tears here. 
Michelle. Michelle. Being told by Ray Leto he did everything right. Michelle, you did everything right. This was your race. This just slipped away. Well, it's, it's terrible, you know, when you have the, the best car, the best crew, everything. I mean, it was so easy, everything going. I don't know what to say, just thank everybody, you know, my crew is the best, you gave me the best car. But you proved a point today, you can run with everybody out there, you know that now. Yes, thank you. Do you know what happened, Michelle, what broke? I don't know, if it's a clutch or the carrying, when I pulled it in first gear, it would just couldn't go, I don't know, I don't know. With what we saw today, I believe Michelle's day in the sunshine and the champagne will come soon. Well, okay. says a lot about a guy who wants to thank everyone with the biggest moment of his career has just been yanked away from him. As a driver, you cannot ever put that into words for anybody listening to this broadcast right now. You can never, I mean, it's the heartbreak. It's just the highs are high and the lows are low. That was a round of applause for Michelle Jourdain Jr. and the Ray Hall crew. What a dramatic turn of events here in Long Beach, California. Thank you for being with us here on Speed Channel. I'm Bob Varsha with Tommy Kendall and Scott Pruitt. We've heard from Derek Daly in the pit lane. Now at the other side of this race-winning story, let's go to Calvin Fish. Well, there's two sides to this story. I'm here with Jerry Forsyth. Jerry, you saw the emotion down there in Bobby Rahal's pit. I know you feel for them, but when you're on a roll like Paul Tracy is right now, things seem to go your way in racing when you've got it going. Yes, they have. Our game plan was to lead the first lap and the last lap, but I assumed we would lead all of them in between, but uh, we didn't, and I do uh, feel, feel bad for Michelle. He drove an excellent race, and uh, his time will come. Talk about the inspiration that Paul has brought to this team. You've been knocking on the door for so long. You had victories last year with Pat, but uh, this is really a championship charger this year. Well, when we signed a contract with Paul, he became very, very focused uh, mentally and physically. Uh, I think he lost 30, 35 pounds over the, over the uh, winter. Uh, he came in here very, very focused to win, and uh, a good team needs a good driver, and that's what we got now. Jerry, great job. Three laps to go. They got the fingers crossed, boys. I'll bet they do. This could be an historic moment for Paul Tracy. Michelle Jourdain Jr. did pick up the bonus point for leading the most laps in the race. That cannot be taken away from him. What a dramatic 29th Toyota Grand Prix of Long Beach here on Speed Channel. Anything can happen in this race. We see Tracy Fernandez, Junquera, Serbia, Vassar having a great run today. Dominguez, Carpante, and Hunter Ray. Now this is Jimmy coming up on the back of Serbia. Let's get more on Serbia with Derek Daly quickly. Forget him, boys. They did not get enough fuel in to finish the race in that last stop. So he will have to make one more stop. He will fall from Whoa. contention. Ran out of he gas. may have run out of gas now. Remember, Paul Gentilossi talked about those high G situations, lateral pull that moves the fuel around in the tank, gets it away from the pickup. Copy. One lap too long. This is where you can't afford to take this gamble. You know you're running light. It's not worth running out of fuel on the track. Wow. Great run for Jimmy. That will move Vassar up to fourth. Serbia parts under a local yellow only. Captain America looking tough. Walt Tracy flashes by start finish. Two laps to go here in Long Beach. Following the battle for sixth, on board, Mario Dominguez looking back at Patrick Carpentier. Carpentier trying to come back from that long first stop where the car stalled. And Jimmy Vassar, remember last year? Remaining. Jimmy Vassar was on the pole here last year. Had the race taken away when they didn't hustle around on the yellow. Qualified 14th, was just ejected yesterday. You know, fighting an uphill battle with that Reynard, but really sharp pit strategy and a great race by Jimmy. He's brought, it, brought him up into fourth spot. Carpentier taking a look. Just doesn't look like he has enough on Dominguez. Six, seven, eight complex. On the back straight. This is one of the favorite spots to pass down into nine. 
got to get a good run off eight if you're going to try and get it done. White flag. And now it's about this man, Paul Tracy, who came to these streets of Long Beach, California in 1991 as a rookie. In 93, he picked up his first victory. In 94, he sat on pole but did not win. He did win from 17th place on the starting grid in the year 2000. And now, he looks to become the first man to win three consecutive races to open the season in three consecutive different locations in Jeff Gar history. And I said earlier, this is gonna be a good test of Paul Tracy's maturity. That one lap on the first stop that they couldn't go as far as Jardine sealed their fate relative to him. But he took what it, the, the race would give him. It was second place until Jardine had his troubles. Ran as hard as he could, was able to overcome that deficit relative to Fernandez. And this is a really smart victory with a little bit of luck for Paul Tracy. I can't wait for these interviews after the race. What a day for everyone involved in the 29th Toyota Grand Prix of Long Beach victory to Paul Tracy and the Players Foresight team. Puts him even with Mario Andretti at three wins here at Long Beach, second only to Alan Sir Jr. six. In the champ cars, Mario would be the first to remind you he did win that Formula One race back in 1977. This is a big second place for Fernandez. No question. Big second place. He was happy with the car this morning, pulled off a good run, and Jimmy Vassar ended up in fourth. Jukara third. Paul Tracy can finally pop the visor open and slow down on the streets. We'll hear from him in a moment. Stay with us. Welcome back live to Long Beach, California, where we have experienced the extreme range of emotions. There's the happy end as Paul Tracy has picked up his third consecutive victory to begin the season. Meanwhile, for Michelle Jourdain Jr., well, the British have a good word for it. He must feel gutted at this point. While Paul takes his place for our post-race interview, let's take a look at our unofficial rundown of the top finishers. Tracy over Adrian Fernandez, as Scott Brute pointed out, big finish for Fernandez, his best finish since Milwaukee a year ago on the Oval. Bruno Schenkera home in third. Jimmy Vassar, a good fourth from 14th on the grid. Mario Dominguez, another solid finish. Patrick Carpentier, sixth. Ryan hunter Ray in seventh, followed by Darren Manning, Mario Haberfeld, and Alex Tagliani had those fuel problems and made a number of pit stops during the afternoon. Tiago Montero of Portugal finishes 11th, followed by Oriol Servia, whose car is still out on course after running out of fuel with a handful of laps to go. Patrick Lamarie finishes 13th, Joel Camatias in 14th, Michel Jourdain Jr., adding insult to injury, finishes out of the top 12, the points paying finishers. Sebastian Bourdais, Roberto Moreno, Rodolfo Levine, and Alex Jung also stationary at the finish. A huge crowd on hand for today's race, and we will join our top three finishers now as they make their victory lap. Oh, oh, oh. Try to keep up with Michelle. Okay, he walked too fast, man. Paul Tracy, can you hear Bob Varsha in the announce booth? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, I'm here with Scott Pruitt and Tommy Kendall. Boy, it looked like Michelle Jourdain Jr. gave you all you could handle there, but you managed to pull it out. What did you think when you saw that Jourdain was done? Wow. Well, it, he was definitely driving the pace hard, and, and you know, I got to give I got to give credit to him. I, mean, I, I was doing everything I could do to keep up with him. And er, I pulled out all the stops on that la the second to last stint just to try to stay with him. And it wasn't enough. And then he had a bad pit stop or something. And then uh, and that was it. I mean, but he was definitely had the measure of me. Now, did you know on that, hey, Paul, this is TK, on that first stop oh, when God. you could only go to lap 27 and he went to 28, that's what put you behind him. How hard was it to settle down at that point and take what the race would give you? Well, it was hard because we had to pit a lap earlier because of fuel mileage. I wasn't getting the kind of fuel mileage that we wanted to. And, uh, you know, he was able to sit in my draft and get a better better mileage than me and did one more lap. And that kind of, that kind of hurt us throughout the whole race because I had to pit a lap earlier than everybody. Uh, but, you know, I had to have good out laps and good in laps, and I was able to drive the pace hard. And we were, I tell you, that was the most physical race I've ever done. We were going so fast for so long. It was a very tiring race. Hey, Adrian, Scott Pruitt here. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, Scott. Hey, amigo, great job. I know, finally. <laughs> we talked to the crew a little bit this morning. I know you weren't there. They said you were real happy with your car. Excellent job today. 
How was yeah. it out there? Well, I have to thank Dave and the whole crew. They gave me a great car, and uh, like Paul said, the pace was very strong, but my car was, was there all the time. We made some good passes, and we had a good uh, pit strategy, and it, uh, it was fantastic. A little bit quicker, and maybe we could have passed uh, was, uh, uh, Tracy, but by then, my rear tires were gone. Now, Adrian, you were on a very different strategy from the three or four cars running ahead of you. Did you have any concerns that you might not wind up among the front runners when it all unfolded? I push every single lap. Every lap as fast as I could go. I could barely, I could just stay. Do you know, know when it's three to go? Got me, Adrian? I couldn't go faster. Hey, hey Adrian. Yes. Your guys that made the call, you went one lap further than Servia and Carpentier. That's what did it for you. Lip, left you ahead of those guys. Were you pretty confident that was the way to go? Yeah, right from the beginning, we were uh, trying to be uh, fast, but conservative in the fuel, and we managed to have a good car all the time and uh, fight good with Serbia. And uh, I tell you, it's, uh, this is the best car I have had in a long yes, time, and the guys, uh, Tracy and Geta, were fighting race. hard. And it was just a great race. Happy to be on the podium for Mexico. All great, great the fans here in Long Beach. They've been supporting me all through the years, and I thank you for that. All right, let's move on to Bruno Junquera. Bruno, another podium, another big load of those precious championship okay. points. Were gone, Are you happy with today's result? Yeah, I'm quite happy. I think uh, for sure could finish in front of uh, Adrian. He passed us on strategy, but I think Michel deserved to win today. Like Paul said, he was an incredible pace, very difficult to keep up with him. But I'm quite happy to put the Pacific Air in mass uh, in third place. Hey, Bruno, Scott Pruitt, how are the track conditions out there today? Were you pretty happy with, with the way things turned out? Yeah, I'm, I'm quite happy, I mean. What, uh, what Scott's asking is he wants to know what the track's <laughs> like for the Trans Am race coming up. <laughs> <laughs> is the track in good shape? Yeah, the track is in very good shape. Thanks, buddy. All right, thanks, guys. <laughs> Wave to your fans. Thanks very much for joining us there on the truck. Thank you. We're going to take a quick break, but we have a lot more post-race coverage to come your way here on Speed Channel. Stand by. Nobody's leaving the streets of Long Beach just yet. Welcome back to the streets of Long Beach, California. Jimmy Vassar, Captain America. You may not have won that, but I think you got a lot of satisfaction out of that drive. Well, you know, I don't want to sound like sour grapes, but the car wasn't really good all weekend. And uh, so we got some track position, and we uh, we lucked we lucked into a strategy that, that moved us up a bit. And uh, uh, so the Jimmy car wasn't really working very well today. So, but the guys did a great job in the, in the pits, getting me some good service, and uh, you know, the ball bounced our way. And, and it was just a matter of you know keeping it together, not throwing it away. Thanks, Jimmy. Good to see the American Spirit finishes both cars because right down here is the top finishing rookie, Ryan. Sorry if I could just butt in for a second. Top finishing rookie, Southern California. Sunshine, you got to feel pretty good. Look at the smile here. Absolutely. No, we, I mean, everybody did such a great job today. It's only my second full race, and uh, we're real happy. I mean, top rookie, like you said. And uh, I thought we had top Reynard in there until I come in, and they tell me Jimmy finished fourth on a strategy. So that's the way it goes, but I'm, I'm really happy. When you mention the second full race, how physically difficult is it for a driver like yourself to move up and do a race this long and this hot? Especially when you haven't done a lot of testing, it's real tough. I mean, you just have no idea how long and how mine consuming and how mind draining it is I mean it's just so draining on me mentally and physically I mean it's real tough I've been working real hard at it and here it is it's working thank you Ryan well done today well done indeed you can find out from the race winner Paul Tracy that that's about as tough as it gets in a champ car here's a look at the championship points now with three races in the books Paul Tracy remains Paul Perfect in 2003. Adrian Fernandez is now second. Bruno Shakira, there you go. Bruno Shakira is now second in the points. Michelle Jordan is third. Boy, he'll just go home tonight thinking what might have been. Sebastian Bourdais, pole sitter in the first two races of the year, just 16th in the championship. We'll be back. Welcome back to the Toyota Grand Prix of Long Beach. Another great run today for Darren Manning, finishing eighth, but a physical race for you in many ways. Yeah, a little bit, little bit disappointed in, at the end there. My uh, right foot went really numb with uh, a right foot break at the moment, uh, and uh, the sole of my foot with about 20 laps to go was completely dead, and it was really excruciating pain every time I braked. So uh, 
Maybe, yeah. I think it, through the beginning and the middle of the race, I think I was a bit faster than Ryan, so uh, if that wouldn't have happened, I might have uh, been able to challenge him. Why is this place so tough? There's not really that many high-speed corners, but everyone's saying a very tough day out there. Yeah, not, not, no, not so many high-speed corners, not so many high Gs, but uh, such slow-speed corners like the hairpin and the fountain section, you run really short gears, so you're just shifting through the gears all the time. You're just driving with your left hand all the time, you know, so at the end of the year, I'm going to have a big, <laughs> bit lopsided. Big week coming up for you, doing some testing and after Brands Hatch, a lot of media over there going over to England for your home race. Yeah, can't wait for that. It's going to be fantastic. Bit of home advantage for a change. Uh, going to a circuit that I know, uh, you know, m most of these circuits I don't really know, so uh, it'll be great to get over there. All right, congratulations, Darren. Let's get down to Derek with a man who had a strong top five finish today. Yes, indeed, Calvin. Second top five of his career, Mario Dominguez. Good day for you. This season, in fact, Mario is beginning to really get some good momentum. We've been fast, you know, and uh, we needed some points this race, and uh, fifth place was great, you know, Reggie Schultz. It was tough out there. We really didn't have the best car, but I just drove to be consistent, and the team did a great bit strategy, so uh, that's what put, up, put us up in fifth place. It looked a bit harem scare him out there at times. Any, any close calls? A lot. You know, I was... Uh, Every time I try to push a little harder, I would understeer towards the walls on entry or oversteer on exit, sideways totally. So I just try to drive very, very consistent, try to make no mistakes at all, because I was my car was like as, as if it was on ice. So it was uh, very exciting. Thank you, Mario. We saw Jimmy Vassa take a tear off from his helmet. This is what a tear off looks like. But look at the type of oil that comes off onto these drivers' helmets and to their windshields, if they are the windscreens, if they don't have these tear offs question about it it gets messy out there we talked about the buildup of marbles the bits of rubber that come off the tires building up offline we saw that when Sebastian Bourdais limped his way to the side of the track after his mechanical problems festivities are now underway down in victory lane don't forget coming up later on here on speed channel the Trans Am race from the streets of Long Beach with our own Scott Pruitt starting from pole you'll see it at 9 tonight Eastern Canadian National Anthem playing for race winner Paul Tracy to Calvin Fish. Guy finishing in the top 10, Alex Tagliani. Tough day for you. Had a very fast race car at the beginning, going by Bruno, but then the fuel pickup issues. Yeah, it was uh, disappointing for the Johnson Control team. Obviously, we had a great car all weekend. Uh, we were running third early in the stint, but um, with the pickup problem, we had to uh, come early every segment, and then uh, we had to do an extra stop at the end because the fuel pump was going bad. So, um, you know, finish 10th, it's okay. I think uh, we are competitive and uh, we can do better next time. All right, Tag, thanks a lot. Good run nonetheless. Let's go down to Derek. And one place above Tag in ninth place was Mario Haberfeld. Mario, interesting day, but I know at one time you actually moved over to assist Jourdain to try and give him a clear run. Yeah, I think when you're behind, you need to assist the guys in front. One day might, we might be the other way around, and I hope they do the same. I mean, it's just a shame for Jordan that he, he couldn't finish and win the race. Your, your uniform is completely soaked here. Do you find this physically one of the more difficult races? Yeah, I mean, it's hard for me to compare because I've only done two so far. But uh, for sure, this was the hardest one by far. Also, the way we ran the car was really physical. Uh, but yeah, I think for us, overall, it was a good weekend. We didn't start very well, but made up six places in the race. and. For us, what matters is scoring points every race and get experience. Exactly. Mary Haberfeld for the MyJack Conquest team. Good run for Mario today as he continues his learning curve as a rookie in the champ cars. As for experience, couldn't find more of it. 
than that man, Paul Tracy, who has parlayed that experience into his third straight win. Well, for the 29th consecutive year, the Long Beach Grand Prix dance with Mother Nature continues on a happy note. It has yet to be rained on. And after all the dire forecasts we had all week, as we told you at the top of the show, we fully expected today would be rainy. But it has not been, and it has been a very dramatic day indeed. Let's get some final thoughts now from Derek Daly. It really has, Bob, been dramatic. You can see the cleanup is starting to go on behind me, but the thoughts I take away from today, Jourdain might have been a slow learner, but today he showed a maturity and it showed that he is now an exceptional talent that could be fast everywhere. Also, Tracy, isn't it strange if it's your year to win the championship, the brakes just seem to go your way, which is what's happening with Tracy here. Now he's won three times from second place on the grid. And we never heard from Bourdais, not just today, we never heard from Bourdais the whole weekend because he came here and said, after his first practice runs, I don't like this track here at Long Beach. I very seldom ever heard anybody say that, Bob. All right, thanks very much, Derek. TK, about your thoughts. Well, I just, I mean, my heart goes out to Michel Jourdain. I, when I said, uh, regardless of what happens today, I had no idea that I was foreshadowing that something might happen. But uh, he leaves here knowing that, you know, Paul Tracy was very candid. He said, I was doing all I could just to hold up. And when you have a guy that's having the kind of year that's as experienced as Paul say that, that's a big boost. And I think we might have seen the birth of a new star. He's been around for a long time, but he's 26 years old. And I think you're going to see him be really on the pace from here on out. No question about it. I agree with you. A new star has been born. And Team Ray Hall and, and Michelle Jordan Jr. will be a force this season. Of course, it may be very difficult to derail that guy, Paul Tracy. Another look at the unofficial results. Tracy's third straight win. Great run for Adrian Fernandez and the Takati team. Bruno Jancara piles up valuable points. Perhaps not as flashy this year as he thought he might be, but he is gaining ground in the championship. The number of cars out of the race, none more dramatically or disappointingly than Michelle Jourdain Jr. with Team Ray Hall in the Higanti car, finishing 15th and out of the points today. In the championship, as we said, Paul Tracy now has a 26-point margin. That is more than a full weekend's worth of points over Bruno Junquera, and that could be very critical as the season goes on. Of course, it's easy. All you have to do is win every race of the season, and it doesn't matter. Our next stop, we'll pack up and head for jolly old England. Brands Hatch, the champ cars make their return. You'll see a special preview on Sunday, May 4th on CBS Sports at noon Eastern, followed by the race itself the following Saturday at 1 p.m. Eastern. And it will be on to Germany the following weekend. So for Tommy Kendall, Calvin Fish, Derek Daly, and Scott Pruitt, who's about to go Trans Am Racing, I'm Bob Marsha. So long from another gala week in Long Beach, site of the 29th annual Toyota Grand Prix of Long Beach. So long, everyone.